Here we go, everybody. Semi-finals of Season 2 of 2024. Let's get it started here. Terran versus Zerg, game number one. Let's why. Let's go. Here we are, bringing up the lineup now. Royal, Light, Sharp, Barracks, Hero, Action, Queen, Sulky. How are you doing today, Shun? Welcome back. I'm doing pretty good today, Sam. It's great to be back. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. Um, I guess we expected this, right? Zerg versus Terran semifinals, and Protoss yeah. was just dominating so much this season, but it ended up being closer than, than I expected, that's for sure. Terran almost taking back that lead, just not quite able to do it, though. Yeah, it's nice to see that the teams are actually like still trying to like give it their all to like try and like switch things up in the point scoring, even if it you know falls short at the last hurdle. But I'm happy that we got the TVZ semis. If anything, I'm I'm really excited about this. Yeah. Um, well, Zerg has been kind of falling off here in KCM recently, but they've got one last chance. This is their final hurrah here. If they can yeah. take down Terran, then. They will go to the finals regardless of their overall performance this season. That might sound unfair, but just a reminder that these players have been getting, you know, uh, winnings every single week. You know, it's not like those uh, regular weeks of KCM doesn't count for anything. It definitely uh, is money in the pocket for the players who win, and it's mostly been Protoss taking home that money so far, but... Uh, they're waiting in the finals. Let's see who is going to go up against them in that finals. And Queen going to start out with the 12 racks. Barracks goes for a regular 1 racks expand. Kind of contrary to what yeah. I would expect from him. Yeah, I, would, I mean, especially on this map, you would, you'd maybe expect like an 8 racks or maybe even a 10 racks or something. But yeah, just a normal 11 racks, nothing crazy. Going to go for the wall in. Probably going to finish off that wall with a depot to, uh, above that depot that he's placed already to the right. But yeah, nothing too crazy. 12 hatch and pool, and probably going to see a relatively normal game. It looks like we're going to see a 2.5 hatch out of Queen. Yeah, Queen, uh, I'm surprised to see him go for this build as well because um, you know, he's been dying to early cheeses from Terran a lot recently, um, most notably in the ASL qualifier. Uh, all he needed to do, he knew that he just needed to be safe, but he went for the 12 hatch. He ended up getting knocked out, but it's just surprising that he wouldn't try to go for the safe route here. Uh, he is going to get away with it, though, and Queen uh, with just uninterrupted 2.5 hatch, pretty darn scary, am I right? Yeah, no, I, I would say so. I think maybe uh, Barracks wanted to bluff a little bit here and try and he assumed that Queen would play something safer with like an overpool or nine pool expand and try to bait him into something like that, assuming a um, eight racks and uh, in a way like Queen's called his bluff if that's the case. Mm. Yeah, that might be the case. Well, we've still got the SCV alive in here, but it's being chased down viciously by this drone. Drone just on the heels of the SCV the whole time. He's even going to try and catch it here with an additional drone. Not quite able to get that moving shot, though. Maybe he can, uh, with uh, moving commands, move commands, actually catch up to this. Just barely. It's so close. He's really, really committed to this. Um, but it yeah. seems like he will get it uh, eventually. Um, wait a second. Maybe maybe Barrack's going to get back in here and get into the scout. Yeah, it's possible. He might uh, just try and like circle around a little bit and see if he can squeeze in to another scout. It would be uh, optimal to see the scout. But it looks like Queen's being really on top of catching this SCV. Just five hit points left on it. So that Ling will eventually catch it and kill it before it gets back. There it goes. So... Yeah, no more further information going to be gleaned from that. But see a very, very early factory here from Barracks. So 1-1-1 uh, one, one build, maybe in, to rush straight into Valkyries or what have you. Could be Valkyrie, could be Vessel. Um, I would assume Valkyrie, just based on what he's scouted so far. He's probably expecting uh, the Spire here. He had enough uh, information, I think, to just about rule out a Hydralis stand being thrown down. It was kind of close you know the layer uh, you usually want to throw down the hydros in about halfway done with the layer but um he's pretty confident that it's not that it's not the hydros den here and there's the starport are we going to start a armory here as well 
Well, he's floating the factory, so it can't be Vulture Drop or anything. So I would assume this is going to be, yeah, Valkyrie play from what we've seen so far, anyway. There it is. The armory comes down. So yeah, Valkyrie is going to be coming out here, engineering bay on time. He's going to want to completely uh, push away this this early Mutalisk attack, uh, not take any damage from that at all, and then come out with a really strong Marine Medic force with a couple of Valkyries, maybe two, three. Try to shove down the third base. We haven't seen that third base just yet here for Queen, but it looks like he's going out to take it now. Yeah, the Valkyries actually build a lot quicker than you would expect, but they are very costly units. So the, the first two Valkyries are like gold dust. So if you do get those first two Valkyries sniped, you can be in a world of hurt as Terran. And that's going to be the aim of the game here for Queen. If he can just snipe one or two of those Valkyries right from the, the get-go, he's going to be in a really good position and be able to deflect any kind of timing attack coming out from Barracks. And going for Valkyries does allow you to attack like one or one or one and a half minutes a lot sooner than getting vessels out so can put the a lot of pressure onto the zerg yeah the moment that he sees that this is a valkyrie build he's gonna throw down his hydralis den and he has to buy time for that lurker upgrade to finish um, once that's done and he's got some lurkers in position he's gonna be uh sitting pretty but uh, killing off the early valkyrie will buy him that time also, just fighting down the Marines here early on. If he kills a lot of them, he could uh, slow that down enough to where he can get those uh, Lurkers out in time. But he hasn't spotted it yet here. He doesn't know uh, that the transition is necessary, so he hasn't thrown down the Hydralis den. He's going to come in in just a moment and see that Valkyrie. And there it is. The first volley comes out on those Mutas, and he should be throwing down that Hydralis den immediately. The clock is ticking here. And Barracks, what can he do? Where can he go with his Valkyrie? And marine or can he keep this alive We're gonna go ahead and build some scourge here for sure um but still yeah. a few moments here before queen can go for any sort of a snipe unless his valkyrie like flies right out over top of that natural yeah in like an ideal scenario we'd already have a pair of scourge but there's no way of queen being able to identify the one 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 into uh, valkyrie so unless you're just gambling there's no real point in making that pair of scourge early but as a follow-up it looks like he's just going to go pure muta and rely on his mutus micro maybe makes a pair of scourge or two he should make two pairs of scourge to get potential value there but he might not choose to do that either i don't see any scourge just yet two valkyrie move out it's a little risky once you get to oh there's the scourge there's the four scourge you were talking about he's going after the valkyrie diving on top of that but great micro control by barracks at the end there he does lose one valkyrie however and one valkyrie so much worse than two um three is really that magic number but he's not yeah. gonna have that he's gonna try and put the pressure on and and bust in here before that happens wait a minute he turns around and starts to head back he wants to wait for that next valkyrie it seems yeah this is the thing if you snipe even just one or two of those valkyries it really does take the potency the wind out of the sails of the terran player and kind of like you know turns the clock back around on them to try and make something happen with less tools in their arsenal and that can be quite difficult to accomplish because without that splash damage in the air you can just get this bioforce completely overrun so it's you have to like you know reassess you know get another valkyrie out get a few more bio units and then go for the big push now well it seems the queen definitely has enough units to take this on with just two valkyries you're not going to splash down the mutas uh, as quickly as you'd like more scourge are coming out here as well so he's ready to take this fight big stim here into the front but there's so many lings so many scourge coming in as well he's going to immediately kill both of these valkyries a lot of the mutas have fallen but the marines are standing strong there's not a lot of lings here left over one sunken colony oh, wow. at the front just barely finishes up but it's not in time gg gg wow barracks taking that fight beautifully i thought that uh queen should be able to overwhelm that that was a lot of lings a lot of mutas and the scourge did make the connections but man Marines are strong. Yeah, I, I, that was a very critical timing for Barracks to hit there. Like, even if it was just like a few seconds later or a few seconds earlier, the attack wouldn't have worked. It was a very sharp window he hit there. I'm, I'm really impressed by Barracks. Like, he had like a very narrow window of opportunity to completely abuse Queen, and he took full advantage of it. Very well done here. Jumping into game number two now. Who are Zerg going to send out next already with a loss? Uh, seems like the regular season is repeating itself here sending out queen first might not have been the right decision okay soul key 
going to be the second choice. A little bit surprised they're not keeping him for the pocket pick, but maybe they'll revive him later if he's doing really well this week. Coming out against Barracks, it's Soul Key, the two-time ASL champion. Dude, this guy, he is on fire recently. And uh, he, he should be able to take out Barracks here, right? Give uh, Perrin a fighting chance, or give Zerg a fighting chance. Yeah, I would say this is like, if I was a betting man, I would say that Soul Key is probably about 70% favorite to win this game, roughly. Should be around there, for sure. Um, again, with the 1 racks expand from Barracks, so not relying on the 8 racks here. And it seems like Soul Key going to go for 12 hatch. Oh, this is interesting. Both Zerg players going for 12 hatch so far. Yeah. And also, Barracks got the absolute worst possible position for TVZ on this map. It's very difficult to defend the main base with turrets. It's very much like Neo Silphid, where it's just the, the expansion is just far, t sorry, the main base is just far too open to cover, uh, uh, you know, accurately enough with just a few turrets. So, mm. can be very easily abused by the Zerg player here. We might see just that from Sulky. Although he doesn't rely on his micro nearly as much as these other Zergs, he's much more of a macro powerhouse kind of player. Yeah, just using the early Mutalist Micro to leverage an advantage into the late game. And almost no one can match him in uh, those late game scenarios here. But on a map like this, three-player map, there's not a really straightforward location to take your third base. And you can't quite play normal here, can you? You have to do something a little bit different. Um, well... To be, to be fair though, Sulky's style is very geared around clearing up bio with, with Mutaling. Right. So he's very good at that, and that will work just fine on a map like this. Right. But he does have to play some sort of like Hydra Defiler or something like that in order to get himself right. to a fourth base. He can't just play, you know, normal no. Lurker, Defiler, keep away into a fourth base. It's just not going to happen. So, um,. We'll see how this plays out here. You know, it might be possible. Um, I've been thinking about this a little bit more recently. Maybe I'll pick your brain a bit, Shun, on this concept. Is that recently players have been going for natural bases way more often. Um, and not relying on like a high ground, small ramp to, uh, you know, get into a normal game later on. Um, that's, know, been my approach for a, that's been my approach for a very long time. It's kind of funny that now that's becoming a trend. Because that's, that's how I've been playing for a very long right. time. So wouldn't it be considered very strong here then on a three-player map to take the natural? Yeah. And just yeah, play I mean, it that way? Yeah, but you'd, you'd have to probably play like more... You could play normal style, but you'd be it'd be better if you were playing Crazy Zerg playing like that. And mm. then even if you do have to make a big sunken wall at both locations because your lurker timing's not sharp enough, it doesn't matter and it lines up nicely for the Crazy Zerg because you can just bank out bank up gas and then do a big lurker switch with upgrade advantage. So yeah, I mean depends on how you approach it, but yeah, I would say so. Well, we've been seeing the players take uh, more much more often take the the bottom right kind of pocket base down there and, and try to go uh, I just defiler on this map but we'll see what soul key opts for he's built quite a few lings here in the early game just set, sending about four up here to the front revealing uh, just a part of his hand here but he's gonna come forward now with the rest of the lings going after these marines right off the bat trying to pick off as many as he can here before uh, the two racks does come out and pull in the SCVs manages to get sort of in front there but loses almost all the marines and Holding all of these SCVs off the line right now. This is a great start for Soul Key. Looks like he will take that base over there um, down at the yeah. bottom right. But uh, yeah, this is a good start. Well, so well, Soulkey's kind of subverting expectations here because he's not going for his usual approach to this matchup. Like he's playing a much more like a lower econ opening to put pressure on to Barracks. And Barracks didn't anticipate this. Barracks thought Soulkey would be a lot more like macro orientated, have a 2.5 hatch opener, just a drone advantage and not really a heavy commitment to links with speed early on. But yeah, with this timing, he's really like kind of subverted expectations and kind of got one over uh, Barracks. And he's actually in a lot of trouble. He's going to have to rely on a bunker and turrets now to make sure he stabilizes against the new timing incoming yeah you definitely don't expect to see a bunch of links being made here when you're going for uh, this type of wall in right now it's uh, very difficult to break through this spot but he managed to get in there right before medics started to pop out and killed off quite a few marines and 
His, of course, Mutalist timing will be slowed down a little bit by this. Yeah. Um, he's only going to have like four Mutas at the start here, around six minutes. Uh, but that'll quickly grow. He doesn't have too many drones back at home, but he's got his third base coming up. He'll probably s make like six, seven Mutas and then switch back into full drone production, get that online. Yeah, but he's done a great job of meta gaming um, barracks in his position. He knew that he'd be trying to do a little bit of a greedy, like one racks production opening with academy, and not have that second racks online as early. So wouldn't have the kind of critical mass of marines to stop those links. That with the marines spawning on the outside, much easier. But look at this coming to main base, getting a little bit of damage done. Not really sniping that many SCVs, but a lot of lost mining time already. And yeah, look at this like lack of coverage of turrets in the main base. He can really abuse this open position. Eventually, there will be enough bio units with this four racks uh, production that he will be able to weather the storm and kick these muters out of here but for the time being has lost a lot of mining time yeah losing a lot of mining time not able to mine that gas either for quite a bit of time here well more and more scvs go down it's the perfect number seven muters were produced seven muters flying around still inside the main base here threatening to pick off more and more scvs as a few more muters are going to join up with this group Will he dive here on the natural kill a bunch more SCVs? Or is he going to try and go back into the main, maybe fight this marine medic force? Uh, just start to lower that sense. down. Yeah, he's going to fly into the main here. Back into that position. The turrets are not done. Diving on top here right as Barracks leaves. This is really unfortunate timing for Barracks. He's just moving out of the natural while the mutas are flying in. They're going to get a bunch of damage. And they can turn around and come back and defend here. Well, Sulky knows that he's gone for four racks. Unless he gets value out of making this many Marines early and slowing down his tech, he's in a bit of trouble. So Barracks is trying to call his bluff and like just say, okay, we'll kill some SCVs. I'm going to go for a timing. So now he has to get back and defend this really quickly because there's no sunken here. So he has to clear up all these bio units perfectly with this mutes he has available to him. Yeah, this is perfect from Sulky. I mean, just the timing of flying in there. As the Marines were leaving, he's just... He's done a ton of damage, and he's back here in time. No problem. It was that that kind of um, play from Barracks to pull the Mutas out of position, but this is exactly what you were talking about earlier. Diving on top of the Marines, picking them off with the Mar with the Mutalis Ling attack. Perfectly done here. Exactly what we would expect out of Sulky. Yeah, this is just like textbook sulky, like through and through. It's what he's best at doing. No one does it like him as well. He's the best in the business at clearing up these bio forces with mutiling in whatever size. Sometimes it's just like six links. Sometimes it's like uh, you know two control groups of links. But either way, like he, he'll get the job done. Now chasing down just a few straggling marines here. He was hoping to send one or two over to a undefended base looks like he might get this one over here but one marine with plus one i mean he might get a drone or two it's just not going to hiccup the economy like he was hoping though no but we did see a very late um, factory timing um from barracks so now it's he's going to start to feel the pressure because he, oh, he's got he's got a single drone kill for that marine at least but look at this even further delaying the tech timing by these SUVs getting sniped by good micro from sulky here and also coming back out onto him needs to be careful not to get caught by those marines as long as he can just keep dogging these marines from behind he's going to be in a really good position only two medics of all of these marines a real sausage party here saying and that's not gonna have enough energy to keep stemming like this no the tech timing has been slowed down so much yeah the uh factory was actually killed inside the main base uh, right before sulky left with his immutas so that factory is super late we've got the uh, starports coming up here but there's really not a lot of pressure that uh, barracks can put on to sulky here he's gonna split up his marines right now send some over towards the natural we don't have lurkers just yet hydras are out uh, lurkers have not been made oh there we go lurkers just starting now we've got uh, a few lings quite a bit of mutas ready to fight uh, this small group is just gonna stim and run in try to kill as many drones as it can it seems like but he, oh he's not paying attention he will gun down the su sunken colony but lings are gonna come from behind deal a bunch of damage lurkers are they gonna pop out in time looks like quite a few drones could go down 10 more seconds is going to be enough time to kill a lot of drones here but the Mutilists do come back. The Lurkers are going to burrow. And this is just pure Marine running straight into Lurker. All of them are going to die and the Mutas can clean everything up. 
Oh, it's just so well executed from both players. Like, Barracks was really astute there to identify that tiny window of abuse, and he did almost execute well enough to really punish Solki, at least in a, a measurable way that would kind of even out the balance of power, so to speak. But Solki's own response to that, like, not only dotting his I's and crossing his T's this game, but like doing it with like style and finesse and like has really stabilized oh. his economy, still churning out three gas. And now look at this pressure containing him with the lurkers before the defilers are out and the tech's already finishing up. So once Barracks is contained, he's done for. All it will take is one Dark Swarm to end the game from here. Yeah, that's right. And the factory is floating over top of the natural. There's no way to get a tank out here to try and break this before we get enough vessels. This is gonna end here. Last few Marines pop out, but they just get completely annihilated. This is just domination now from Soul Key. It was a great yeah. attempt here by ba Barracks. I mean, he gave it his all in this game. Absolutely had some good ideas, but this is over. GG. Barracks taps out, and Soul Key takes his first Terran scalp. Light versus Soul Key. Should be a sick match here for. Set number three, Soul Key in the top left. Light down here in the bottom left. Retro is the map. Very quick rush distance here between the Terran and Zerg base. So you got to keep that in mind. If you're going to 2.5 hatch, you need two Sunkins to hold the two racks pressure. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of Zergs try and be greedy with that. You know, there is the style of making more speedlings and mm -hmm. then having just one single sunken or just lots of speedlings and no sunkens. There is a few ways of approaching it, but yeah, generally speaking, I think it's safer just to go for the double sunken play because it, it just, you know, there's less lava investment there and it just kind of rounds out your economy a little bit nicer than going for the link commitment. And also the link commitment can really go wrong for you. All the players today are, all, all the Terran players are doing, well I say all, but uh, it's only two, only half are doing the uh, one racks fast expand here with the wall in. Um, this was the most popular way to play for a very long time until the eight racks meta kind of came. But it, it may be going here? Are we actually outside of the two racks meta? Is this, is this the end? Should, finally? I mean, it has been going out of style, hasn't it? People have been doing like one racks tech a lot more and then like going into like four racks after mm. initially opening up that one racks. Yeah, so, I mean, it's hard to say for certain. Obviously, the, the meta is kind of like a merry-go-round. I mean, we might come full circle in a few years time, but we'll have to wait and see. Right, and it's always good to throw in those strong builds that have been phased out of the meta because people aren't expecting them anymore. Um, so the 8-Rex is not dead and gone, but maybe it's not the standard anymore. It might not be, you know, right. every other game is the 8 racks here. Uh, we'll, well, I, we'll I think see. it's... I think the issue with it, with all metas is that you need to still use the builds enough that it's a consideration for your opponent because if it gets to a point where you're never eight raxing and zergs like always 12 hatch then we've got an issue right this mm -hmm. one this is the era when flash got away with 14 cc every day of the mm. week because like no one was punishing it because no one was adapting to the meta right and right. this is what we need to see we need to see people you know throwing out those random uh, builds more just to keep uh, the pressure on their opponents so they can't just get away with the most crazy greedy openings you can imagine well, this is really interesting. Look at this opener here from Soul Key. He's uh, delayed that Gans yeah. to get the third hatch out. This is going to be um, a very this... interesting hold from him. He's going to rely mostly on Sunkins and Lings and go into some sort of uh, Hydralist Defiler play, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And this is how you would play on something like Neo Silphid. Mm. You would do this kind of opening. And it can be extremely strong, but there is a few windows of weakness that the Terran can exploit. But with the way that um, Light has opened, it might be a little bit challenging for him to actually punish this. And with it not being Silphid and it being retro, this actually this build actually lines up a little bit better because this 12 o'clock is not so easy to lay siege to early on. So there's no like chance of like a, an early bunker going up and Marines getting getting into it and there's, bit, there's a pressure applied to you like there's much less chance of something like that happening so yeah this is much safer play from sulky going for it here instead of uh, a map like silphid maybe i didn't see the scv inside the the main there um i don't think he saw the gas timing so you know, light might actually be in the dark about this third hatch even being yeah. there in the first place he might be expecting 2.5 hatch well he's gonna get the uh, scv into the main now and when he sees what's mm -hmm. going on um 
everything will be revealed here uh, as soon as he sees that layer timing i think he'll know um yeah well, he has actually confirmed when right. the layer started exactly yeah so he, unless the scv sees when it finishes it actually it's hard to identify but what he can do is see how many drones and links have been made so that will help him narrow down the range of play here so he will be able to suss this out he'll start to think hang on a minute there's a few hundred minerals missing here mm, now he's gonna send that over to the third base yeah we'll be able to figure this out drone on the ramp that's a dead giveaway <laughs> i mean yeah you're not gonna be able to see it but i why yeah. is the drone there of course it's got to be a base well it, it's it's a representation so sulky's trying to represent like oh i want to expand here but i haven't yet uh, obviously it's like obviously it's like not something that's that convincing but there is a tiny chance that it would trick someone like light it's very unlikely to work but in the like five percent chance that it tricks him you kind of go for it right right so we hit that five minute mark we're gonna have two medics pop out here in a second and a big move across from light here sunkins need to be started actually uh this rush distance is very very close yeah um from light space to sulky space so and it's and it's and it's, it's a tight wall in as well so you can't pressure the ling backstab as cost efficiently as you would be able to usually right. usually you could just like say oh i'm gonna run past my lings if you do that and then you need fire bats to plug the hole and blah 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 but no no you can just go straight across right now so this is a real nightmare situation because this is the weakest point of the build because you have to sunken up two locations now mm -hmm. we do see double sunken at both locations and with a handful of links he can hold here but it is a big investment early on but this is like we have to do this or we could just die here yeah absolutely this is this is the game plan from sulky uh he's pulled it off to this point three sunkins here at the natural two over at the third couple of links here as well to just make coming up this ramp harder uh than it ought to be and light i mean he just can't really do too much here um sulky is gonna get his spire out and he's gonna have mutas coming light just gonna head home he's gonna be have to be satisfied with the number of uh, sunkins that have been made and uh, i think that sulky is completely happy with this oh yeah now this is probably one of the better scenarios that sulky could have hoped for and he's also going to be making this queens at the um third location which is less likely to get scanned he, he's very unlikely to scan this third base location from now on so hiding that tech there if he does scan the main base now doesn't see a queen's nest that could really throw light off the timings here right i think light's got a pretty good idea of what's going to be coming though we should see yeah hydra's then um evolution chamber i guess going to be thrown down here as well probably start that plus one armor but he probably he, he'll want to start plus one uh, range attack as well pretty soon um getting those hydros upgrades really important yeah if, if he does want to go for that which this is lining up for that if, if that is going to be indeed what he got, does decide to go for then it would make sense to get the, the range attack as well but there is a tiny chance that he does some kind of weird play where he like makes the ultralist cavern at the third base location and does a weird ultra switch he could do something like that to throw light off i don't think that will be the case but it's possible he does do something like that to really throw light off single mutilus flying through the main base here he's going to scout everything that's coming the timings on the tech here from light have been revealed more and more mutas are being made right now uh, but he's just keeping them very very defensive here as he goes for his hive and uh, holds back whatever light decides to do next yeah uh, there's another uh, there's another option here if he if he so choose he could get a greater spire and also like make it just not even that many but just a few uh, guardians at the this natural location of light just to be annoying and to waste irradiates and what have you while also doing this transition into this but again i don't think he's gonna elect for that i think your observation was more accurate i think that's the that's the plan of action here and that was the plan from the start like, there are other uh, variations he could go for but i don't think he's gonna attempt anything like that yeah this is the strongest way to play on three base it's uh incredibly efficient uh, very difficult and annoying to deal with as the bio player uh, and that's that's exactly what you want to do you want to tax your opponent as much as possible with whatever build you're pulling out and he adds on extra sunken colonies here just to make sure that he doesn't get broken once the plus one is done on these marines and uh, they're in this high of number you definitely need four sunkins over at the natural three on the high ground here uh, to combine with these links to make sure that he can't bust through but he's just got everything necessary he's uh, made sure that he has exactly what he needs to hold off light here and light 
He doesn't have any tricks right now. He's just playing the standard game, and uh, I think that Soul Key is doing a great job of amusing no. that. Well, the only thing that Light's done that's so-called not standard is he's cut. He cuts a, uh, a lot more SCVs than the average Terran. Mm. Like he he'll cut SCVs around 36, 40 quite often, and like stay on very low economy but high production. So he'll have a strong standing army in the mid game to really try to put on pressure onto the Zerg. But with this kind of setup from Soul Key. It's not going to be successful unless he somehow gets into the natural expansion soon. But I don't see Sulky letting him do that with this, this mutilous caress that he's doing. No, he's going to pick off more and more Marines here. Uh, we're going to have Lurker coming out soon. Hydras and Defilers are just very, very uh, shortly going to pop out here. Um, yeah, there's the Lurker. So you just can't break through here anymore. And he's got the, the air defense as well. Some Scourge in the main. He's ready for a drop. There's not a lot of places to drop. Uh, when you're going up against this type of play. Just the main base, basically, uh, is going to be the, yeah. the, the, the first target. There's the first defiler. Um, Lurker's on high ground here on the right. Lurker's behind Sunkins on the left. What's your Pick your poison here, Light. Where are you going to try and dive into, man? It's not a lot of good options here. No, I mean, he's going to probably try and like threaten this Lurker stack on the right and hope that Defiler comes out on the left and there's no Nidus set up and Consume's going to be finishing. Not quite yet. So there's going to be a small window for him to abuse. That's why we see oh. this this positioning. Oh, look at that. The, the, the Scourge actually do go down. So if he can keep these vessels alive and get the Irradiates off. But look at this strategic positioning of the Overlord. Sulky knows that the only chance that Light has is getting these Irradiates off and preventing the Defiler from connecting up with the Nidus. And that's the timing that Light was hoping for there. But with the Overlord over the top of the stack, this is, I, I think that's kind of sealed Light's fate and not being able to accomplish that. Yeah, Light's going to have to go for a long game here. But uh, the SCV was shut down earlier that was being sent out to take a, a base at 6 o'clock. And the Lings are being really active in the bottom right, making sure that uh, Light can't just snag another CC in. Light sitting here kind of impotent. And he's going to be uh, unable to take more expansions. This is fantastic play from Soul Key. Wow. He's just completely predicting light here, figuring out exactly what he wants to go for, and he's shutting down every single option right now uh, that our Terran player has. And he's eating up a ton of irradiates here right now. These are all irradiates that should be on lurkers and defilers, but they're being forced to be used oh, to clear wow. out these mutas, and he gets the CC. This is crazy. So Light was being so cocky that he was like, oh, well, all I need to do is throw down some irradiates and then you'll run, you'll run away and won't snipe my CC. But really great just splitting and like composure there from Sulky to finish the job and getting a cancel on that third CC is like disastrous for Light now. Like Light's going to feel really pressured to do something. And he's getting found out in the bottom right as well. This is crazy from Sulky. He's playing out of his mind. Oh, he forces the cancel or the kill there. I'm not sure which one. Oh, dude, Light Light should have, you know, four bases right now. Um, everything else being held even. Like, he should be just expanding like crazy uh, while Solki is powering up here. But he just hasn't been able to do that. Solki putting on so much pressure when it should be the other way around. Light should be the one putting on all the pressure. And now going to dive on top of this science vessel. Luckily, Light able to target those down. Keeps his vessel alive, and I think that's the one big good thing here right now for Light is keeping a ton of vessels up here. Uh, he hasn't really lost any of those thus far, so he's going to have a real fleet in this mid game. Yeah, I mean, so far, Sulky's giving a master class in like macro ZVT, so like pay attention. We might be seeing something really special out of Sulky already moving out with more i love how confident he is when he pushes out like he, he he takes every possible inch from light but not an inch further like he's very calculated in how far he pushes out with his lurkers and then throws down the dark swarm and he's so good at seizing any ground that's given to him at this stage of the game and then he just explodes out onto the up he has these avenues of attack opened up now and then it forces light to turn around and while he's not paying attention suddenly his army's getting plagued and he's just going to spiral out of control from light unless he can get like four gas online very quickly yeah get four gas four star ports start pumping out battle cruisers really take this actually no battle cruisers this game maybe you go for double factory do you think double factory in between the natural uh, and the third i mean some some terrans would say like going triple factory tank is a good response to this but there would be other terrans that would tell you that that's not necessarily the greatest idea so i guess it depends on like who you talk to 
I personally think the the factory response is probably the best. Just trying to fill up the middle of the map with the big siege tank army can cut off these like little counterattacking forces with small numbers of defilers and lurkers and hydras. But it's all up to Light here if he's comfortable just going full on bio and huge amounts of science vessels. I mean that that can also be strong. It's just so hard to control. Yeah, and it's just so cost efficient for Zerg. Like usually Zerg is the def has the defensive cost efficiency, but when you add Hydralisks to the mix with Plague, Zerg suddenly has that kind of dominance, but out in the field as well. And the Defilers aren't as weak in the open field as they would usually be. The one thing going for Light here is this big vessel fleet that you can just keep chain irradiating any Defiler in sight. If you can keep that up for long enough and get these four gases online, we might see a Light victory still, but even though Soki's only on three base right now, this Zerg army is so cost efficient. And as long as Sol Key micro as well does good, good plagues. It's so difficult to combat from light. Ah, gonna send some uh, dropships out, but get spotted by the overlord here. Uh, also, Solki taking the position over there at the center left. Another factory gets built. Is he gonna actually start building tanks here? It seems like that's gonna be the late game plan. Um, these dropships, where are they gonna be sent? That's a lot of fire bats inside those as well, by the way. Yeah, the huge amount of fire bats. Okay, maybe 12 o'clock, yeah. Looks like he's gearing up for that as Solki pushes right towards his natural. This is just a, uh, like a Terran push, you know, like a, a rally push straight across all the way into the natural. Here comes the drop, but it's just pure Mutalus here to fight this and everything's going to stack up. The Lurkers are going to take care of things beautifully. Dude, Solki is doing so good right here. He's just crushing these armies. Do you know what's really funny is that like Light's trying to be smart and like keeping his marines on like hold position to like keep them away from like lurkers and getting baited into attacks and stuff. Then Sulky's abusing that by like running in and like sniping off like individual units with his hydras and stuff. Like this is crazy from Sulky. He's playing out of his mind right now. Looks like Light gonna do the right thing here. Get in between uh, the rallies and the the front line here. Try to stop this from going down, but he gets both the defilers. That's really the key. Yeah. Getting both of those defilers right there is huge. Gonna try to come forward here with a few uh, hydras, but we've got no dark swarm left anymore. Just a couple more medics need to pop out, and then maybe we can actually break this position and shut down this push, this rally push across the map. Man, so many units coming out of Soul Key. He's got a ton of money still banked yeah. up, and his his uh, supply is just getting huge. Oh, what's 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 critical here is he has access to this nine nine o'clock position to both launch assaults onto light, but also take this potential gas base. These tanks are going to be critical here because if if he can keep Sulky at bay, he will also be able to threaten this base, deny gas mining there, and prevent any Dark Swarms suddenly popping up like a jack-in-the-box all of a sudden. If he gives any ground to Sulky here, he runs the risk of a Defiler sneaking a Dark Swarm on top of his natural, and then the game can just be over. So Light's going to have to do a real good job of staying on top of keeping that lane under control. But look at Sulky coming for the attack in the bottom right. There's not enough Marines there. Just a bunker and like eight Marines total is not going to be enough. He's going to have to evacuate. Might lose this command center. Has a Defiler here for support as well. So we'll get some good trades with these units as light comes to defend this as well yeah it looks like light wanted to get a factory on the high ground start to pump tanks onto that ridge line and just uh, hold that position but it doesn't seem like that's going to be possible anymore great plague there on top of a bunch of these vessels and Light's army going to have to turn around walk away no way that he can break that right now he's just going to have to rely on bunkers uh, at the 6 o'clock, um, and the lack of Defiler there after it's been irradiated. You shouldn't be able to break that position. No, the tanks! Oh my god, the tanks oh, are sent tanks. forward! He's losing yeah. the tanks. It's so important to keep a critical mass here, but he loses those three tanks right off the bat. That's really, really bad for Light right now. Yeah, I mean, he could irradiate those lurkers on the high ground and bust up into that position if he's on top of things, but it won't take long for Sulky to reinforce that position, which he's doing so now. I, I believe so. This is going to be a little bit of a nightmare situation for Light because without that fourth gas churning away, he's not going to have that critical, crazy amount of resources to build an unstoppable army. Like, he's now being mined out. Like, at 18 minutes, now he's made a natural mined out. He's back onto just one base worth of economy. He's got a bit of a bank, but he's going to get dried up soon. Beautiful plagues from Sulky as well, pushing down the ramp with Dark Swarms, threatening to kill these tanks and the, uh, some of these bio units as well. Killing these two tanks is critical here. Never going to be getting that, uh, a big fleet 
of um, uh, vessels combined with a massive arsenal of tanks to just like run through the Zerg. Like losing all these critical gas units will just never allow him to come back in this game. Like bio units will not be enough to trade against this. No, they won't. And this tank count, I think it's been reset too many times at this point. He's lost it over and over again. He's got four more tanks here that have just popped out, but out of mining at his main, his natural about to go as well. And Sulky's going to be fine to keep mining here for quite some time. It's 19 minutes in. He's still got two more minutes of main base gas time. And he's got plenty of time left on the, the minerals in all these bases. So he's going to be sitting pretty here with this fourth base coming up as long as he holds this. He's in a winning spot here. Light needs to make something happen. He still hasn't cleaned out the bottom right, though. There's still a bunch of units there waiting. And a CC floating forward here. He's planning to take the center left. Is that going to happen? Yeah, this is the critical moment where there's a big tempo swing in ZVT. The Terran mines out a lot quicker than the Zerg. So we have four base worth of economy for the Zerg player, but only one for the Terran player right now. So it's a big tempo swing in this game at this junction. And yeah, Solky's pretty much done it at this point. Like he's 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 keep, kept the critical mass of the Terran under control long enough for him to get these four gases pumping. And now it's going to be really tough for Light to, to trade efficiently against this. And so far it's looking like a Sulky victory, but he still has um, a, a, Light, Light's not, not exactly a bad Terran player, so Light sometimes like has hero defenses where he makes the impossible possible. It's still possible for Light to flip this around, but right now it's looking so good for Sulky. Yeah, Sulky just looking fantastic. There's no drops or any sort of X factor here for Light that can bring him back in this game suddenly. Uh, we're going to have a Nidus over there at the center left here soon. Um, Defilers, of course, popping out as well. Great irradiates go down on a lot of this stuff. And the army is actually looping around from the top side. Going to come in with the D Matrix as well. He's going to jump on top of this. Can he actually break this? The Nidus is there. So it's going to be very hard to get through this. But with the Defiler popping out and the Dark Swarm coming down, I guess these Marines will have to turn around. Some good irradiates do land on the Defilers there. But the Nidus is just undeniable. That base is Soul Keys. You just can't break through now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, unless he's somehow got on top of the, the Nidus canal earlier or had tanks supporting that bio to, you know, snipe that Nidus while the Marines are training. Yeah, unfortunately, now Soki's, like, regain control. He is actually laying siege to this base for the time being. We'll be probably getting the kill on this. Oh, not quite getting the kill on this gas as Soki runs down the ramp with some Lurker Link to try and get on top of these tanks and try and prevent this gas being sniped so we can keep mining away here. And it looks like so far that's being successful. He's still mining gas and he's killing some of these tanks. No way. I can't believe that gas didn't go down there wow. <laughs> cc floats out to the middle he's gonna try and mine off of those minerals in the center but this is a losing battle right now for light he's gonna come back around try to hit the backside of this uh base once again maybe while things are getting crazy here he can get in no not gonna happen soul key on top of all of this he is everywhere right now and light is just not able to keep up there's the big play oh. There it is. He finally wow, gets the money plague. plague there. And this wow. army is going to completely disappear. There goes Light's counterattacking force. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Like, getting the chili sauce all over Light's kebab and then just, like, gobbling it up like a, a drunk guy on the end of his bender. And he's, like, starving hungry. He doesn't care about the quality of food. He just wants to get something down his neck. And some Terran units coated in chili sauce. He's all happy for it. Even a little counterattack down here at 6 o'clock. He can pick off these bunkers one at a time and actually pressure this base, even though there's no Dark Swarm here. Yeah, there's great upgrades on these Hydralists and Lurkers now. Uh, they're dealing so much damage. Damage, the explosive damage to the bunker takes that out very very quickly and a lurker egg on the ramp he's gonna block him out of take <laughs> defending this base and he actually kills the cc that was the last mining by base for light wow. this is just such a great takedown here um sulky perfection in this game this is like seriously guys you need to study up because like class is in session right now and professor sulky is trying to like l let it be known how to play zerg because this is about as straight up perfection finesse you can get without no no fa no funny business no fanciness just straight up strong macro zerg play yeah showing you how to do the three hatch before gas now he's taking even more bases all around the map looks like light gonna make one last desperate attempt to break center left there's not too much over here but 
The moment he breaches this ramp, a mass of Zerg pops through the Nidus and blocks that attempt. The CC in the mid's been taken down. The CC at the six has been taken down. One last tank. Siege is up, gets a final shot off, but plagues are here. Hydras are here. Everything is ready for Soul Key, and the walls are closing in here. Light's got nothing left to back onto. He's got no mining, and he's got no hope left in this game. GG. He taps G -G. out. GG. Soul Key's like the Mike Tyson of StarCraft with the peekaboo style. Jack in the box, just like, you know, did duck. Oh man, I'm just so impressed with him. How is he playing so good? Gets the golf clapper from uh, KCM there. Excellent, excellent performance here from Soul Key. Can't wait to see his next game. Next up, we've got Royal here being sent out on Citadel cross map situation. Um, is it possible to do that same style that we just saw out of Soul Key on this map? Uh, I mean, it's possible. Will we see it? Probably not. It, you don't have the high ground advantage of that third base like you do on Sylphid and Retro, so a little bit trickier because you you end up having to make more sunken. So instead of going for like 3-2, you end up having to go for 3-3, and it's just a little bit of a pain for your economy to stretch yourself that thin to make six sunkens that early on. Mm. Kind of puts a little bit of a dent in that build, so it's certainly not optimal to go for something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I did try this th that build uh, myself on this map a few times, and uh, it seems a little rough. Um, even though it's like a nice choke that they have to run through to get on top of the sunkins, it's it's pretty rough to to try and stop with the just pure sunks at that loca that location. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, we probably won't see that same style come out of Sulky here. Uh, likely we'll see him go for just a regular 2.5 hatch, go into um, a base, maybe take the natural at one of these two yeah. locations and try to play it out and that way. I, Very strong on this yeah. map. Yeah, and I also expect him to, to use Mutaling as his solution to any early game pressure builds from Royal. And yeah, nothing too too crazy. I think we'll see a much more standard Soul Key this game. And as for Royal, uh, cross map, probably more likely that we might see uh, early plus one here and like a quicker, you know, four or five racks. Um, it's, yeah. it's not really feasible to cross map two, two racks uh, academy push and hope to break Soul Key, whose timings are just so sharp. Right. So yeah, all things considered, this this does actually benefit Soul Key a lot. He, he is a guy, and he is going for that 2.5 hatch. So he, the fact that it's cross map and he's doing 2.5 hatch and there's no pressure from an eight racks like Soul Key sitting pretty right now. Yeah. So Royal, I mean, he's got some options here. He's gonna have that mid game time for uh you know pushing across and looking for drops and that type of thing uh, as long as he survives this early game of course but um i don't think that sulky's gonna get too aggressive with meter or anything he's probably just gonna make the bare minimum do his best to to hold back royal and look at this he's even gonna keep the drone alive he sees everything in the natural he knows yeah. what's coming well, he he went as deep as he could go without losing the drone so very well calculated from him there yeah and engineering base so uh there we go i uh i nailed it there definitely gonna be the plus one uh quick plus one year from royal and um no two racks timing out of him yeah and, and i like how active sulky's being with his drones like one of the advantages of going for 2.5 hatch is you you can have a little bit more lava and drones to play with them one of the ways he compensates for not investing in early ling defense because of the cross map positions less chance of any like you know naked marine early game shenanigans of like mm -hmm. two three marines coming across snipe drones he's being very active in shutting down the scout with his drones as well and like just being really on top of everything in general and i'm really i'm really really impressed to see like all the tiny little min maxing out of sulky and only just now finally at four minutes starting to hatch out a couple of pairs of uh, lings to kind of like clear up that scout keep it out of the base because he's had it out of this base all this time and now the lings will keep it shut out from the base with yeah. these uh, initial fallings that's right 
Um, I love what Zulki's doing with his Overlord also over there on the right-hand side. He's just keeping it over the high ground uh, because Royal did move over there to try and catch that coming in. That's a good heads-up play by Royal, but even better by Zulki, just realizing that's probably going to be the case. Not in a rush to get the Overlord over top of the natural. Fine to just leave it there until his links are on the field and he, he confirms like the position here of the Marines and then he'll move the Overlord into a good spot. But th these are just all great signs of a fantastic Zerg player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I would argue that he's probably the best macro Zerg, like in this current era i don't think i mean there, there are other good macro zergs action for example he's actually very good at macro play so is hero but there's something a little bit special about sulky he's just got that x factor about him that star sense that thing that we uh always talked about flash having you know yeah. that that like knowledge that deep deep understanding of the game and the current meta um that other players just don't quite have and Sulky really having that on full display here. Finally, going to be popping out Mutilus and sending a drone, I think, probably to the top right. Just snag that base. Looks like that's a, a dot heading out on the map right now. Um, yeah. But he's going to hit a nice timing here. He hasn't built hardly any lings at all. Just six lings. No sunken colonies. Seven meters are going to pop out immediately here. And he's going to put on a good amount of pressure. Yeah, and with the cross map, I mean, there's not really a whole lot Royal can do about it, but just, you know, mitigate as much damage as possible, keep his uh, zones under control by spreading out his turrets. You see Mihu do that a lot. He'll actually, like, have his turrets quite far apart um, relative to what you'd usually see with them all, like, tightly knit together in the mineral line. And then he'll use that zone control in conjunction with the bio to just shut out any mute harassment. No SCBs die. And then you've got a nice, uh, strong macro for the mid game. But so far, Royal wants to, you know, threaten the counter attack still, like, is standard. But now that opens up the door for Sulky to come in here and get a few SCB snipes and be annoying, which is something that you wouldn't see if it was Mihu playing. He'd be a lot more passive and defensive. Yeah, this is uh, a little bit unfortunate for uh, Royal. He didn't build many turrets there, and actually, Sulky didn't build seven Mutilus either. He built like five Mutas, so he's not able to one-shot. Wasn't able to one-shot, even though he had a great opportunity to get a huge amount of SCV kills. He actually only kills like maybe three, I think, total, because he has to two-shot uh, each of those SCVs. And now he's got to leave immediately to head back home and deal with this Mut or Marine Medic Ball. This is bearing down on his front. Um, I think these are just going to be sacrificial Marines at this point. They've stimmed so many times, and there's just no much, not much energy left. But this is great control out of Royal picking off two Mutas immediately. Some links pop out, immediately get sent into the meat grinder here. And the Marine count is getting lower and lower. There comes the last few links from the backside. He should be able to clear this finally. But this is not a, you know, clean... Uh, finish off of these Marines, and even more Marines are going to arrive. Wow. Oh my god, Royal is actually breaking through right now. Yeah, there's five Mutas, but one is dangerously on HP, so if Royal can find that low HP Muta, he won't have the kind of potency in this Muta flock to, like, help clean up this force. So, yeah, this is he's, he's, he's in trouble now. He's only got four Mutas, he can't one-shot Marines. The drones are evacuating, he's going to lose one of them at least. And he might, he might still clean this up before losing the hatchery, just barely, but he might lose one or two Mutas for his efforts. Yeah, he, he was a little bit too greedy here, it seems like. The dive in with only five uh, Mutas, excuse me, not proving very effective. And now he's been slowed down in terms of his mining for so long. And he's killed so many Mutas and Lings that this next wave of Marine Medic is going to be very hard to deal with. Solki, he's known for picking these off, for being really, really good at handling um, Marine Medic with just pure Ling Muta. But this situation here it calls for something very, very special out of him. Yeah, I mean, this, this is exactly what you would need to do to someone like Soki, because he is a macro machine. So if you do throw a wrench into the, the cogs of his macro machine, like we see this Marine in the top right getting a couple of drone kills, this is beautiful efficiency from that one Marine getting two drone kills. That's nuts, guys. Like, these tiny little things add up to a big, 
big di big differential in power scale for the Terran relative to the Zerg player in this mid game. So now Sulky's scrambling, spending lava on drones when he wants to be making units. Doesn't have the mutalisks to harass and get much value here. So just got the bare minimum to have some map control, have some presence, and still threaten this mutaling. But means he hasn't built as many drones as he would like to. He isn't on that critical mass of economy that he would like to be on. So we don't see this crazy production from Sulky that we would usually have. Yeah, ironically, the early game greed from Solki leads to kind of a skimpy mid game here. He built a lot of drones instead of Mutas earlier on, and now he's got to build uh, even more drones to compensate for the ones that he's lost because he didn't have that earlier army to shut down the marine attack, and it could happen again here. He's very skimpy uh, on his army count here. His economy is just not looking good. He's got some lurkers on the way. He's got to delay this, though, quite a bit yeah. more than he's already done uh, in order to yeah. get these lurkers out in time. Yeah, like, like 15, 20 more seconds until these lurkers hatch. It's going to be just barely in time if he slows him down one more time, but he's not going to be slowing him down. He's going to go for it, get some drone kills, and the lurkers going to be hatching in just a few seconds here, but it's not going to be quick enough. He's going to do some critical damage here to Sulky. Yeah, he runs through uh, up onto that high ground there. That was the best that Solki could do, but it's not going to save his base. Um, and with the base going down, I think the hopes of Solki have just been dashed royal. Absolute savage, just taking down Solki here, uh, punishing his greed, and uh, making it look very easy, actually, making these Marines look insanely broken. Yeah, I mean, this is... This is I mean... I'm a little bit concerned for Sulky. Like he still has a little bit of, of gas in the engine to do something here, but I think that there's just barely enough for Royal in his natural that nothing's gonna come of this. And now Sulky has no compensation for this devastating loss. He's just gonna go for it, see if he can do some damage. He's probably gonna GG out. Yeah, this should be it. Just a few lings making their way to the front here. The hive just barely started. GG is called Royal. Taking that victory away and putting Terran on the board once again. Evening out the score here. 2-2. Two to two. We've still got Hero and Action on the back burner. Plus a revive for each squad. Let's see who gets sent out next. Phew, a fantastic game there. Last one with Royal. Absolutely crisp timings from him and... If you guys go back and just take another look at uh, when the Mutalists were popping out, Royal hit the scan the moment that the Mutalists popped. He saw exactly how many Mutas were coming. He saw the drones. He saw that uh, really Sulky wasn't committed to doing a lot of damage with the Mutas. He was just trying to hold him back and, uh, you know, try to get as many drones out as possible. And Royal identified a moment where he could put on that pressure and, and went for the kill. This is peak, peak StarCraft right now, guys. Absolute peak StarCraft. Yeah. Royal is on another yeah. level. Yeah, and we're going back and forth. Like, I really like this back and forth. Like, it's not like just a one-sided show where like Terrence mm. dominating Zerg or what have you. Like, this is like what we could have hoped for. Like, so far, so good. As far as semifinals is concerned, like this is really entertaining to both watch and cast. Absolutely, and going to be throwing down a, a, an eight racks here. Uh, we are on Troy, of course. This map absolute craziness you can't expect any sort of normal game out of any player uh, on this map but uh eight racks i mean it's strong here very very strong and it looks like action's gonna go for a 12 hatch so we might yeah. see the first um back-to-back -back win for uh, a side here in this one. Oh, it's, it's absolutely possible. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, it, especially if he goes for 12 12. I mean, I hope he doesn't. I hope he just makes a pull on 11. He should. On some, a map like Troy, I think you, you're considering the 8 racks a lot more being. Yeah, and Royal. It's Royal and it's Troy. I think you have to make an 11 pull here. He does. He does. So. It's all going to come down to drone control here. No drones have been pulled to the front, I want to say. Very big, big uh, consideration here. SCV is going to get in. There's the drone coming out now to deal with this uh, SCV. Um, potentially. 
There we go. He sees it. He sees the barracks. He sees that it's making Marines already, so he should know and should pull a, a drone. So actually, it's going into the gas. I wasn't expecting that. Don't We don't usually uh, mine gas here. Maybe it doesn't realize yeah. that it's eight racks. He must not realize. Yeah, he's not playing like it's eight racks, so no. he's in a little bit of trouble right now. Yeah, you need to pull those drones a little bit faster, get them out to the front here, and even try to run by the Marines, get behind, try to stop the, the rallies from coming. We're going to pull them all together. There's the, the big mass of drones here. It's going to start to run by, but great targeting here by Royal. Oh, he's actually caught up against this wall, though. Getting some really good hits on these drones. He's killed or on, on these Marines has killed two of the Marines already. The bunker oh. finishes, but a great surround. Oh, oh. that was a fantastic this surround there. This is a great recovery from, I, I, I can't believe the action like was so like nonchalant in reacting to this and still gets away with it. Like he doesn't even identify it and still- oh. <gasps> Beautiful play from Action Target firing down that Marine just before he can get into the bunker there. And yeah, he shut down Royal's aggression even though he was caught with his pants down. Like, Action makes it look easy here. Wow, this, that, I mean, it looks easy, but I can tell you right now that that is not easy it's to pull not. off. Royal really making a mistake though, I think. Like, he went up against a wall um, and kind of tucked himself into a bad no. spot there. It was. Uh, up to Royal to kind of dance backwards and keep target firing drones as they continue to run forward and trying to get their shots off. But he gets completely surrounded, loses all of his Marines, and he's not able to get in the bunker. Now he's in a really horrible position. Action here with the high ground. He's got a few lings up there. He can pop out a few more. As long as he deals with this uh, upcoming naked Marine push, he should be fine. Yeah, I mean... Well, if he's not got anything hatching right now, he might be in a little bit of trouble. It's five Marines to, to, to play. There they are. Okay, it's just perfectly timed links. Look at that. He's got everything just crisp. He does try the same technique of trying to tuck down into this corner to see if he can get enough surface area denial to trade well. And it looks like it's not going to be just coming out his way, like losing just barely there in that trade. And it doesn't really matter. Like that trade was not going to go his way no matter what happened pretty much. So ah, this is absolutely absolutely really stellar stuff from action like you, you almost got completely caught with his pants down and managed to like completely flip the script to Royal and made him look a little bit silly there yeah absolutely that was um not an optimal situation in any sense of the word but he managed to make it uh work for himself and comes out in a really big advantage here We've got plenty of drones popping. He hasn't made any extra lings that he didn't need. And he's got a ling inside the main base of Royal. Just prancing around here, seeing absolutely everything that's going on. Royal is, I mean, just so far behind at this point. He's going to have to pull up something really, really fancy here to make, make his way back in this game. One thing to note, I would say, is that Action is a macro-orientated player, but he's one of the most aggressive macro-orientated players. And he has very high APM, very high um, task-switching ability, and is able to cope with really high-intensity levels of interactions and also force very high-intensity interactions. So he's not as easily abused in these early-game scenarios. Like, a lot of the Terrans can get away with, like, catching a Zerg off guard with an 8 Rex and just obliterating them. Someone like Action, he's like really experienced in both low economy defensive and counter aggressive play, but also the strong macro play. So he can kind of do it all. So he's really hard to, to take advantage of in these early game situations. While he's getting into his macro game now, plenty of mutas popping out here. Immediate evolution chamber pops down. And whenever I see an evolution chamber at this time, I'm immediately thinking Crazy Zerg. What do you think about that, Shun? Yeah, I, I'm thinking Crazy Zerg, and Action is definitely um, one of the strongest Crazy Zerg players there is. So yeah, I would say that's a, that's a good bet. Great Crazy Zerg map, by the way. Uh, he's taking the base in the top right-hand corner, which you can just kill the assimilators, and then you only have one position to 
uh, sunken, right? If you're going to go crazy Zerg, this yeah. is the optimal map to do it on. It's one of the optimal maps, plus it's it, it being action, it, that the skill set, I'm not saying that the crazy Zerg's hard to execute per se, but it does, the style of crazy Zerg lines up perfectly with action's wheelhouse of, of skill and ability. Like being an aggressive macro Zerg, crazy Zerg's amazing for action. Now, I'm a little bit worried he doesn't have many lings out right now um so killing the the assimilators in the top right since he hasn't started that until just now uh those are going to be open for quite some time oh he didn't start it yet at all he isn't he's not attacking mm. that um so i'm a little bit worried a little bit worried that he won't be able to close that up in time but he should be able to pump right. out a few more lings to, to start doing that here pretty soon yeah kind of cute how he's got the link tucked uh, to the top of the gas so it's like not very visible to the naked eye so might you know the marines if they're on move command won't necessarily kill that be kind of funny to see that transpire well for now still producing mutas Getting into his hive, has the plus one armor on the way, one sunken at home. He's bare minimum defense right now as he drones up. Uh, yep. And Royal, I mean, he's going to have a lot of marine medic here. You need more than one sunken to deal with this. Definitely. Yeah, but this is, but this is only three vex, so he doesn't kind of, he's not exploding out onto the map like he would. And this, this that, that, if it was a four vex play from Royal here, he might actually be able to really threaten action because it does require the Zerg to trade exceptionally well with the muters out on the field. So, yeah, but Royal, Royal has such good macro and unit control anyway that the three vex might be sufficient still. Uh, I'm worried about this, man. I am really worried for action right now. We didn't kill the yeah. assimilator as quickly as we should have, and this is still open. One assimilator is not good enough. We need to kill both of them to, to make this into an island and to execute yeah. this crazy Zerg play correctly. We might end up losing this. Um, well, bringing everything together. Mm. The hole is tighter, so the Marines funnel through a little bit worse than usual. So mm. it does help the muters kind of like deny them coming in here. Yeah. At least. But, but look at this. He's going to get in a little bit. And there's just barely enough surface area to start gunning these muters down. Still, with, with some good micro, able to kill off some of these Marines, but not enough to deny them coming in here and shutting down this base potentially. And this could be a nightmare situation. Beautiful micro so far from action, doing the impossible for the time being. But that's going to run out very quickly here, unless he can get more and more muters he has so far rejoined more muters to this flock we're back up to nine now so as long as he can just stay on top of his ma his micro here and just constantly threaten this bio force he might be able to save this expansion i think he's just barely gonna save it few more muters popping out he's got a good amount here uh to fight as well no reinforcements coming um probably gonna lose this overlord unfortunately but i don't think that six marines can take this base down anymore Oh, that's worst case scenario for action there because um like he got two two bad volleys off and wasn't able to save the overlord but he does clean up the bioforce critically without losing a single drone in this top right this is an absolute stellar defense from action to hold on by a thread and I, I really do feel like killing that gas even though you only got one tightening up that choke just a little bit bought a few seconds of hesitation from royal before he committed to busting into that and also um those critical seconds allowed just a few handfuls of muters to come across the field and join forces with that flock and just barely hang on there funny that he's gonna let the medic survive in the top right hand corner but he's definitely gonna kill the assimilator now has some wings working on that right now okay one link coming over to finish those off a bit of a nightmare like that's a horror movie right there the medic's not able to do anything yeah. about that and the link just gonna tear them all apart um there goes the assimilator finally oh he actually sent some drones up here they're not going to be able to get through that's a little bit unfortunate they won't be able to make it back home either more seconds coming up here on the high ground five sunkins is that enough to hold i think just barely but just barely but they're not finished just yet though so only three are currently active there is a, a flock of scourge to try and dive onto those uh, valkyries kills a couple of them but with the drone pull actually just barely gonna hang on but doesn't deal with the valkyries critically so might lose a couple of these overlords now unless there's some scourge already on the way yeah a lot of overlords probably gonna fall here uh, more valkyries being made they're not going to be very helpful as time goes on as we get into you know um mm -hmm. ultralist tech but you know it, it's actually just de it's deceptive um it can be really hard to deal with uh, a lot of valkyries when you're going for crazy zerg 
because you just don't have as much anti-air and a lot of your uh, overlords can end up getting picked off. It really slows you down a lot. Well, you're, you're low on lava and you're, you're tight on gas and mm -hmm. Scourge eat up both of those resources and that's the problem here. So, if, and now we got like seven Valkyries out on the field. <gasps> Royal's just going to start mowing down everything soon. This is going to turn ugly very quickly here for action he's still current he needs to kill these valkyries now he needs to okay one does go down but that's not going to be enough he's supply blocked and these valkyries are going to start hitting at his uh, front door and there's not enough to stop them yeah and at the same time roll is just going to start expanding all over the map becoming massive and action's just going to be stuck here building more and more overlords he can't really do anything with the the tech that he's built up right now great move right now from action to actually send his mutas across the map and kill the SCV. This might bait uh, Royal to bring his uh, Valkyries back. No, he's just going to stay here. He says, screw it. I'm not even going to save my uh, CC over there at the center right or center left. I'm just going to kill overlords over and over and keep you supply block. Uh, that was the critical moment there. Like we, we saw, we saw Scourge popping out, but they didn't get the connections on the Valkyries. So now we still have like, yeah, we still have the Valkyries running rampant now. And he's apply blocked, and he's going to lose these free overlords. It's going to spiral out of control for action now. He's not necessarily dead, but this is almost critical damage. He has a hatchery coming up in the top left to Nidus Canal over an expansion later on. But this twelve o'clock getting shut down and losing this many overlords is going to really stymie his hopes of a, a victory here. Yeah, he just does. He doesn't have anything right now, dude. He's in such a bad spot. Um, do you go for like a, a defiler or something? Do you switch your plan up? Uh, you're never gonna be able to kill these Valkyries with just pure scourge, right? Well, yeah, but that's the thing is that he has to he has to bank. Oh, it's such a strong counter to what he's doing that he has to bank on those scourge connections because it, it's too inefficient to switch into um, Defiler, get all that tech online. Well, and waiting for that, he's still going to take this damage anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like he kind he's kind of investing in the hopes that he does keep picking off the Valkyries one at a time, but wasn't quite getting those connections like he had hoped for. And now even the vultures uh, laying down mines all over the center of the map going to make it even more impossible for these ultras to come out and get the value that they need oh, oh my goodness oh. my wow. connection there we just barely caught it on screen but getting those uh those sweet sweet mine connections you just killed like 400 gas worth of units there 75 mineral unit that's that lays three of those things one of those things that it lays just killed 400 minerals 400 gas like it was nothing Ah, oh, he's gonna find this base as well, Royal. Dude, this guy. Wow. He's got eyes in the back of his head. He spots everything. Stars, he's gonna shut down this really Nidus, dude. Nothing that uh, action can do right now is gonna save him in this game. He is just in such a bad spot now. Um, this makes maybe... me feel sad. Mm. This makes me feel sad saying because I feel like Crazy Zerg is going to become less likely just because of this performance. And it's such a it's such a good build. It's just that it's gone so horribly wrong for him here. It is, it really has. And action, like you said, is one of the best in the world at pulling it off. Um, not able to make it happen against Royal here. And uh, generally, when you're teching really hard as the Zerg player, it's not great to go into valkyries right if you're just going straight valkyrie and they're they're tanking out of um mutas it, it's usually just a, a, a losing situation for the terran player but uh the, without any anti-air i guess you can just make this work you can just keep killing overlords and keep preventing the zerg from taking any more bases and eventually you will overwhelm wow. them stifle yeah, them out of this crazy. game yeah, we're seeing vultures killing hatcheries, a plus one swarm of Valkyries. We're seeing like Terran pulling out all the tricks here. This is just the, the kind of shenanigans you need to really frustrate a Zerg that's trying to go through the motions as he's used to. When you do get that critical mass of Valkyries, it becomes untenable to just like try and deal with them with Scourge. But yeah, unfortunately, like Royal kind of like had his number and, and dialed it. And we see this crazy game here and really impressive stuff from Royal. Like he's really, look at his patrol micro as well. Just gunning down all the pockets of Scourge that come his way while staying on top of his macro. And he's the one spreading like a virus on the map. 
whereas it should be the Zerg, right? Like, whereas this is like, this is like China during the early days of coronavirus. Like, the threat is contained. And if you do step outside your door, there's like cameras watching you and you're going to get in trouble real soon. Well, full mech switch now here from Royal. He's trying to hold the middle of the map, which is a little bit tough. Such a wide area here on Troy. Uh, he ends up losing a bunch of tanks, and that's one way that action could potentially start to bring things back, is if he keeps killing tanks in small numbers, and we never see the critical mass out of Royal, that could be a way that uh, action you know, starts to bring things into his favor. However, uh, Royal still has a bunch of Medic Marine to defend all of his bases, and he's still got that good critical mass of Valkyries flying around with the plus one. Um, oh, he's going to get some free tanks here, maybe. Scourge could get some connections, too. Patrol Micro, so on point this game for Roll, dude. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, he's just getting more value out of these units than most other players could. There's probably only, like, two other players on the planet that could be getting this value out of these yeah. units right now. Well, you know, this, this style from Royal, it can go so badly uh, against Crazy Zerg. If you go in with, you know, not enough Valkyries or you don't control them properly and then they all die, you no. just spent so much money on something that was traded out badly against Scourge. It, it can be horrible, but he's managing to make yeah. it work here. Just perfect control and perfect decision making. Still three Valkyries left here. He finally got the, the Scourge connections mm. he wanted. But it's just so late. Like, we, we needed that a lot earlier. And because Royal was so on point, it, it, it's just, it's, yeah, too little, too late. He's already exploded out onto the map. He's getting this full on mech transition underway. And it's going to be too difficult to trade these ultras cost efficiently by the seams of it. Might be some crazy mind drags that help kill the tanks, but we're not going to see it, it looks like, unfortunately. And yeah, these tanks only cost 100 gas each. And these ultras cost 200 gas each. But it's actually hard to to get one for one trades here as uh, with these ultras uh, trading at a deficit usually yeah trading at a deficit here he does get on top with a lot of links but more vultures come up to help this is pretty good trading here from action yeah Re limiting that uh overall tank count slowing that down just a little bit um unfortunately gonna run right into a mine here does get a good drag i'm gonna pick off a couple more tanks it's a lot easier to trade one for one uh, or, you know, two yeah. for one if the tank count is this low. And it, I, I mean, it is very low it's, right now. Well, this is how you win with Crazy Zerg against this, is that you make it into a scrappy game where there's small pockets of tanks everywhere and you can overrun them because if they are in a critical mass, they just mow everything down. Mm -hmm. So you try and make the game as chaotic as possible. And like, yeah, and we, we might see a little bit of a tempo flip here, but it's not looking like he still will just barely get that. If he gets these tanks as well, we maybe would see something, but I don't think that's going to transpire. I think he's now still got the critical mass of mech army that he needs to shut this down at the time being. Yeah, it appears that um, Action is just barely getting these extra gas bases online, whereas Royal already has, you know, multiple expansions in the top left. Uh, his army is just too big. His macro engine is too strong. And GG is called Action. It's taken down. Finally, a two kill streak here. Royal looking to be on fire today. Are we going to see a Terran victory? Hero might have something to say about that. Hero versus Royal on Dark Origin. Not going to be our final game. We still have that revive in the back. Um, quick explanation about that is that in the semifinals and the finals, each team gets one revive, one opportunity to bring back one of their players and have them, uh, you know, try to, to clutch out the win for their team. Um, you cannot get an all kill though if you get revived. And by the way, it's it's three kills uh, to get an all kill if you're reverse sweeping, or four kills to get an all kill if you are uh, you know, starting out here. Um, it's a little bit harder to get an all kill in the semifinals and fi uh, and and the finals, but it's uh it's happened before. We're not going to see it here. A lot of players have been eliminated already. We're down to hero now. Starting out with the 12 hatch royal. Gonna go ahead. 11 hatch, and, oh, 11 hatch. Okay. With the 11 hatch there, he will be able to get the faster pool, but it's not gonna be like a early barracks to try and threaten. So it's um 
It might have been better to go for the 12 hatch. It's just a little bit of a safety play here from Hero. Yeah, it's like hedging your bets, basically. Like, you're getting a slightly earlier pull, but you're, you're losing out on your drone count. So it looks like Royal's going to get a tiny edge in the early game with these build orders. But Hero's just playing it safe. It's a two-player map. I think Rax is so likely. And yeah, hedging his bets and coming out short just a little bit. Unfortunate for him, but I have to say, saying you're really on top of things today, like um, explaining like the the rule set and stuff. Like you're you're like shutting down any like YouTubers' efforts or making it very difficult for them to like nitpick issues. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you didn't say about the revive enough times. So like, you need to say at the start of the video. <laughs> A lot of comments. Um, wondering about that. Uh, if you guys are ever wondering, like. Well, what is all kill and, and the, the rule set and stuff like that? If you just go to my channel and type what is KCM, I, I did a whole like uh, explanatory video on that. You um, did. So you guys can check that out if you're if you're interested. And if it's one of your first times watching KCM, welcome. I've been doing this for about four years now. So sometimes we forget that uh, there are new people joining. But we right. do want to welcome you guys and make sure that you understand what's going on. So let's get into this game. No sec or no third hatch. Can you actually get a two point five hatch no. here with the no, eleven hatch? It, no, no, absolutely not. You you you're, you're even behind a normal two hatch curve because of the less one less drone. Yeah. So very very low economy opening. You can obviously still play a more or less. He is gonna do that. He's just gonna oh, look at that. Yeah, say, he does. He's just gonna do that anyway. I love Hero. He just says Hero, Hero just says these are the rules and. You know, fuck that basically, and I'm gonna do what I want. Looks like he delayed the Overlord to to get that out. Because the over, like yeah. he got he got kind of supply block there. He made like a a later Overlord. Yeah, 1818. And he made the 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 hatchery so that he could make another drone. And then the Overlord pops. He can make some more drones after that. So this is this is a bit of an adaptation, a, kind of a unique build here out of Hero. And yeah, uh, I think it's. Yeah. It's, it's he's what he's done is like he's only getting away with this because it's a two-player map and he's got the confirmation with the overlord of what mm. exactly royal doing early on without having to drone scout so he can compensate for the lack of drone scout mm. that gives him a little bit of economy back that he would have otherwise had to invest it in early on and that that's how he's dipping into this and like thinking okay i'm going to min max just a little bit here adjust the build order just to make sure i don't like take such a big of a deficit into my economy early game from opening 11 hatch some high level stuff here coming out of hero he will get into a very nice macro position look at all the drones that are popping out right now um five minute push is just about to come here for all although he did uh delay his other barracks i think a little bit and going directly into four racks so maybe he won't push out here at all and you know hero will just get away with not making any links or sunkins Oh no, he built some sunkens, I think, back at home, but he sees only five marines and one medic. Only one sunken is necessary to hold that. Yeah. Well, he's a tight Mickey Mouse wall, but he will try and threaten, like, you know, doing some damage to that depot. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Royal turned around for that, because, I mean, he's got another marine popping out, I imagine, and maybe he's worried about more lings coming into surround, so he wants to, like, get the kill on these lings because it it can be advantageous to like even if you just just kill one or two of those lings it can actually be a big deal mm. uh, going forward so so it, sometimes it is wise to just keep turning around and trying to get a snipe on those lings because it, it does make the zerg a little bit more scared about potential like early early timings pre-muter and um if you can make them over commit in muters to make sure they're defended it can be also advantageous because here is the kind of guy that he might only make five muters so if you do make the zerg feel a little bit exposed he might be more likely to commit fully into muters and then your turrets make more sense it's a lot of turrets coming up in this natural it's a difficult natural to defend against muters so i understand but five turrets already here that's a lot of commitment uh, yeah, but he's going to need it. I mean, H Hero is a very macro oriented player, but he's also pretty pretty good of his micro as well. He's going to kill at least about six SEVs, which is about what you need to be happy with your economic curve as Zerg. If you can kill about six SEVs and not die or take any damage to the counter pressure we see right now, then we're sitting pretty. But actually, Hero is being a little bit slow on the evacuation on, and the exit uh, outside of the turret ring to then come back again. So might be a little bit tricky for him. If, if Royal's on top of things, he might better catch these muters and do a lot here. 
I thought he was gonna just sprint all the way into the natural and and Hero was gonna be in a lot of trouble, but no, he, as you can he see, do that. No. he just kind of paused in the middle of the map there and he's gonna slowly make his way back, forcing the Mutalus out of that pocket in the back of his base at least, but not getting any real return damage, just opening up, yeah. up some space for himself to, to finish up his tech and build some more turrets here. 11 meters now on the field. Hero has that full stack. He's got a bunch of lings as well. So he's going to be able to threaten sniping this uh, group of bio that's on the map uh, while sort of transitioning here, getting more drones going uh, over to that third base, getting that third gas online and, and making the next steps here, probably into Hydra's defiler. If he can, uh, if Hero can time getting on top of this bio before it rejoins, I would have been really impressed with him. But he he wasn't on top of things enough that he got the links into position to set up for a mutaling cleanup before the bio forces rejoin. So I'm a little bit I'm a little bit bummed about that because Sulky would have had those links already in position, but Hero's Hero's not as adept at that style as Sulky. So we didn't see that like critical timing of the links coming in with the muters there to punish the bad positioning of that bio force but nonetheless we still have a chance of getting the same thing here just with a less cost efficient trade yeah the bio ball is looking pretty big now he can shave away at it chip away at it here maybe kill off a few more marines he can lower that count uh, enough to where a cleanup will be possible if you dive on it right now for anyone who's wondering um you are gonna lose a huge amount of meat as well he's gonna go for it here this is a pretty good surround with the links though and the wow. mutas are doing a great job just targeting down one by one each of these marines very good cleanup here from hero and wow yeah. making it look easy well the two bibles were just far enough apart there that hero identified that the battle calculation is in his favor because unless the if the bible is all together in one big ball then obviously the trade goes way worse for hero but with them slightly separated like that he just pounced on it and got the critical damage he needed he needs to be careful on the exit here if he can maintain his mute account he's going to be so happy like he's going to be teching fast getting everything on time having a strong economy and not needing to worry about like over committing to any defensive of units early on like he can just like play the perfect economic curve here because he's already got so many muters and he's already shaved off so many bio forces well royal in a tough spot right now he's been slowed down quite a bit a lot of scvs have fallen hero making his transition happen ling's gonna come in one more time he's gonna dive on top of this bio ball this is kind of the last a uh, little hurrah here for these mutas they don't really have too much utility uh, past this point, so he's going to send them back home now. Just five here, but look at how many drones he has. Holy crap, look at the saturation at that third base. He's going to be able to add on, you know, two, three, four more hatcheries in his main and start to pump out hydras just en masse here. We haven't seen that transition just yet, but he's making a ton of lurkers, a ton of hydras. Defilers are about to pop as well. Very good spot right now for Hero. Yeah, it's going to be a nightmare situation for Royal coming up here. He's actually behind on supply right now in the mid game where Terran should be in, in, in a dominant position and actually like leveraging um, his production against the Zerg. We see the inverse happening here and uh, that's a really rough spot to be in because he's going to start to get contained by these lurkers before the defilers are even relevant. And that's not a position you want to be in as Terran. You need to have map control at this stage in the game. And without it, you're in a you're you're, you're basically close to death's door before the game's even really gotten underway. Almost picking off a vessel there. And oh my God, he's forgotten some of his medics oh. behind the army. Four medics are gonna go down here. It looks like uh, three at least fall. One medic left for all of these marines. Uh, a sausage wow. fest, like you were saying. This is not a good spot to be. <laughs> You're going to be losing uh, those Marines very, very quickly if you try to basically do anything except retreat and uh, regain medics and, and get some more energy going here. Yeah, that, that, that bio ball is like showing up to a party and there's like 20 dudes and one girl. And she's got a boyfriend. <laughs> Well, this, I mean, we got to get some more ladies in the in this party here. Looks like he's going to bring them together. Um, and as he tries to cross the bridge here, Hero just going to dive with Scourge as well. He picks off two vessels. 
uh, and the the marine ball is just gonna get completely cleaned up on the the bridge right now not falling back Clean far up. enough right now as well so he's gonna lose even more vessels I think jumping right on top of this hero in the face of royal and he's rallying defilers across the map dude this is so so bad He's effectively won the game pre-Defiler, which is kind of crazy to think about. Like, he will have the Defilers to, to finish the deal and to kind of, like, solidify this position. But he, the fact that he managed to accomplish this much without even utilizing the Defilers is absolutely batshit insane. Gonna dive in here one more time using the Irradiated Mutalist to deal some extra damage here to the Marines. Finally, Firebats pop out here. It's a great decision to build these Firebats right now for Royal. He needs something on the ground to fight underneath this Dark Swarm. Um, 11 kills on that already. 12 kills now. He's gonna clean up every Ling with that plus two attack. Just ravaging the Ling count, but um wait where are the lurkers okay lurkers are being morphed over here defiler at the front but no lurkers with it so he can't actually hold that position and heroes are uh, sorry roll's gonna get out on the map that's that's crazy I mean, that one that one firebat did 350 minerals worth of damage and that was seven lava worth of units it's crazy to think about but yeah i mean he's, he's just barely now got a little bit of map control uh, he's not gonna win the game but at the very least like he's got the map control to not die right now but here comes another flood of attack dark swarm comes down lurkers are in hot pursuit as well and there's not a left uh, in this bio force to kind of stop this from occurring and he's gonna be able to both take his fourth gas at this high ground on the nine o'clock while also potentially starting to lay siege from this bridge location at the very least shut down any hopes of map control from um royal hill yeah there's that one more defiler he does get the irradiate off, off on that so we won't be able to push just yet more defilers should be coming though and hero taking a fourth base as well ultra cavern on the way here he's got the late game in mind uh moving out along the right hand side he actually gets across the bridges here but that's a lot of lurkers. Cannot engage that right now. Needs to just get a bunch more irradiates down before uh, thinking about taking that engagement. Okay, here we go. Gonna take this fight here. Running right up on top of everything. Not enough DPS from the Marines and Medics to actually take out these lurkers. They get their burrow off and the spines rip everything to shreds. Oh my goodness. It's, yeah. it's really hard to take a fight like that. But when you've got this many... Uh, lurkers and lings coming in you're you, you're at such an advantage in terms of just army it's pretty easy to make it work hero dives on top of that he clears out the army on the map and he denies map control for maybe a final time here because royal is just about out of this yeah, I mean, the subterranean spines on those lurkers have been so effective, even without the plus one attack, allowing him to kill these marines in two shots instead still taking three. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, he's had such a swelling of those lurkers against the tiny bioforce. Like, it doesn't matter that the the tr the great the upgrades are Terran favored. Like, he's still trading more than effectively enough, even though he did allow Royal to come across the bridge and put him into a bit of an awkward spot with that critical mass of lurkers, still shutting him down, still now laying siege with these dark swarms going to be leaving frogging forward in these positions to try and get a checkmate scenario where he's able to get on top of this economic production of royal and start shutting down the mining here at this third base potentially well i like what uh, royal is doing here and just irradiating all of the lurkers and ignoring the defiler because he can t kill off that defiler now it's would have been a wasted irradiate um if you wanted to irradiate that as well but um, just struggling right now. It's an absolute struggle fest here for Royal. He's fighting for every inch of ground, and he's barely able to take any part of this map for himself. He's just holding on to that third base, but only just. And Hero is continuing to grow. He's got 1,600 minerals in the bank. He's going to be able to pump out an insane amount of units here very, very soon. And uh, Ultras are about to hit the field. Uh, it's, yeah. it's gonna be really really hard to hold yeah he just made a lot of ultras all his gas just disappeared he's already got lings flooding out so with the link with the ultras starting to come in here and tank for these zerglings they're gonna be even more effective cracks finished we got more and more upgrades on the way this is going to tip more in Hero's favor the longer this goes on, especially if Royal hasn't got a fourth gas and beasties being made right now. 
Yeah, no fourth gas, that's for sure. I don't know about BC is coming out just yet. It seems like he's a little bit too much on the ropes here to make that uh, sort of transition happen. Firebats are helping out against the Lings right now. He's going to try and break this high ground, but uh, right at this moment when he tries to break through, I think is when the Ultras are going to finally hit the field. There they are. Five Ultras popping through. They're going to run up. Start to tank in the front line here, keeping the sunken colonies alive. More ultras coming from the side. Where are all the lings with this? I don't know, but it's not even going to be necessary. The ultras can do it all themselves. The heavy lifting here of the Zerg Swarm. Clearing out this bio and reducing it to almost nothing. The medics die as well, and GG is called. Great play here from Hero. Taking out Royal and keeping Zerg alive. Sharp versus Hero, our next match. And tit for tat, back and forth. You love to see it. Zerg and Terran taking games off of each other, back and forth here. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't have hoped for more. I was saying it earlier, this is like the perfect script for the evening. I'm super stoked for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't expect that as well. I thought it'd be a little bit lopsided. I thought Terran would be a little bit more dominating, at least initially. But no, just back and forth. I'm really, really happy about that. And I'm wondering who will end up being revived. You might see a hero revived because hero might have a stellar performance here um, tonight. Sulky as well would be a very strong consideration. Um, but I was going to say, um, with that last game, like, there was a little, it was a critical timing where it was 3-1 upgrades for Terran to 4-1 upgrades for Zerg. Now, the plus three weapons is critical for Terran to even have a chance at killing those Ultras at that stage. But also critically, like, with the plus one attack on those Ultras, it allows you to chomp through those Marines in two hits with your Kaiser Blades on those Ultras. And that actually really changes the battle calculation. If Ultras have to chomp three times instead of two to kill those Marines, like, the trades go a lot more, a lot differently. Yeah, just so on top of everything there, Hero. Of course, he had all the upgrades necessary. Of course, he had Defilers everywhere and Lings and Ultras popping out at the exact perfect time. He just was in the zone in that game, I feel. And is he able? Is he going to be able to recapture that here against Sharp? Sharp, much more. We think of him as a versus a, a Protoss player, like a, a Protoss killer, but... He does put out some fantastic games, especially recently against Zerg as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And and these are two of our favorite players, I would say. I'd say we I I love both of these players, but I'm more of a hero guy, and you love both of these players, but you're more of a sharp guy. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of Sharp and especially his recent play, like the past couple of KCM weeks have been just insane, insane play from him so um he really showing up for the terran squad and a big part of why they got some last minute wins here in this season yeah yeah i mean i was rooting for hero all the way in um asl and i was also rooting for sharp i, I was i was happy with both for their performances a little bit disappointed in some regards but overall I, I was super stoked and um we'd love to see more from both of them as well in the coming events yeah i hope neither of them are uh, discouraged by their results and that they're gonna continue to you know grow and uh, commit time to improve in this beautiful beautiful game there's no limit to how much you can improve here and We've been seeing that oh, repeated over and over again. Look at this. Sharp is going for a plus one build again. Oh, is he going to get this drum kill? Oh, he could have gotten that. So close. Yeah, yeah. That was really, really close. Four HP on that drone. And that actually would have been a big deal, losing a drone this early to that as well. Like, that would have been crazy. Yeah, that would have been wild, but... Hero able to keep that alive. He kills off the scout as well, so not able to get, you know, full information here. He, but uh, I think the game state has been kind of decided from Sharp. You know, he's not going to push out. He's going to threaten. He's not going to push out. He's going to go for this plus one, early plus one. Um, same thing that Royal did uh, in cross map, yeah. right? He just he sees that he's not going to be able to do the the two racks timing and deal any damage. He's just going to get that plus one yeah. early. This is the this is a very trendy alternative to that two rex play that we see a lot of these days. This is starting to become a lot more meta, and we do see a bit of a shift in Terran players going for this kind of thing more and more. 
Yeah, the plus one, uh, early plus, the, the early plus one was very popular for quite a long time. Uh, there were some uh, plays by Zerg that could take advantage of it, and it kind of fell off a little bit in favor of the two racks, uh, and forcing out the earlier um, sunken colonies and, and extra lings and stuff like that to deal with it. But uh, there are definitely situations where it's still very, very useful. Here, Sharp is just going to uh, have a nice timing uh, where he can get, you know, four racks or three racks here uh, with that early plus one. Have a big timing of a large amount of lings or a large amount of marines to get out here on the on the field and actually put on some uh, later pressure rather than the two racks, you know, coming across the map at five minutes here. He's going to have like a six or six minute 30 timing where he just has a lot of of units to work with i mean marines would be wild if they came out in twos like lings can you imagine that sam 50 <laughs> minerals and you get two marines that'd be crazy unstoppable i would say you'd see bio and tvp yeah that 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 might actually be a thing i'm not sure though um storm's still pretty good doesn't matter how many marines you have <laughs> you killed them before storm with that many units mm, maybe meet us here coming across the map Hero taking the base in the bottom left. I'm a little bit surprised to see him take that instead of the natural. What do you think about that, Shun? Uh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, like that is the tried and true way. I, I'm, I'm in disagreement with it. I, I'm much more of a fan of taking it in the natural expansion. But, but, but Hero is like a god tier Zerg where he doesn't even like need those tiny like little considerations. Like he's probably happier to take it here. Cause he, he's got the game so well like calculated in his brain that having the hatchery far further away, harder to snipe, and like it just works out better for him that way. Everything lines up better for him and yeah some players even if it would be arguably like better on a certain map to do something like that they would still go for this just because they got it mapped out better ah supply depot is gonna go down here that uh, turret uh, kind of in a neutral position they're not actually covering the supply depot fully so you're gonna be able to take that out do you maybe it's a bit of a mind game here right like uh we've seen the the naturals getting taken for a long time and it's a great way to hide your third um because yep. terran players will be scouting and scanning around the map trying to look for that um but since it's become so popular to take in the natural maybe they're going to be scanning the naturals instead and then taking the main is actually going to be the hidden base <laughs> yeah the, uh, that, uh, well, pun, uh, funnily enough, I'll circle back to what I said earlier, and like the meta is like a circle. And look at this Mutaling dive, though. Going to be getting on a few of those Marines that were a little bit out of position and has nine Mutas left over with a 10th here and an 11th as well to go back up to a full stack. And only one Medic there, so can't actually stim that much right now, can um, Sharp here. So I think Hero is another sausage party. Like, what is it? With it? Like, like, what's going on? I, I, isn't there more females than males in the world? Or am I crazy? I don't know. You might be crazy, Shun. We've got just a small group of Marine Medic. You just tell that Sharp not quite as good as players like Royal and Light at controlling these early Marine Medic, but uh, he's doing a reasonable job at it. He didn't get wiped out there at the front, and so he's able to keep like a pretty high count of Marine Medic here uh, with which to push out. He just hasn't put on any pressure thus far. 10 more people got invited to the party only one girl showed up you see this shit guys <laughs> marine's just getting sniped over and over and over again and here just taking really good control in this game now um not the greatest trades here out of sharp he's finally gonna lift this uh barracks and send it into the main at least get it out of the way here so that the marines can move but i mean we should be out on the map like pressuring hero and forcing him to you know build sunken colonies and, and get into lurker play but we're just not able to do this at all great control here by hero dude wow. he's sniping so many marines He's, he's on, look, look, at, look at the APMs right now. Sharp is not a slouch either. Sharp is a very, very talented player. And even he just can't keep up with this level of interaction, this level of execution from Hero. Honestly, he's one of the most impressive Zergs we've got. Not in the sense that he's the best Zerg player, in the sense that he's the most well-rounded Zerg player. Like, he does everything well. 478 APM. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Holy Hero back and forth back and forth between his bases and his mutas and just 
moving constantly looking for opportunities to snipe marines over and over and over again and like you said sharp just not quite able to keep up with this level of interaction this level of back and forth here every single time sharp takes his eyes away from these marines the mutas are flying in to deal more damage the hard thing about playing Terran is there's a lot of times in the game where you're forced to focus on your army and you can't divert attention to building turrets, building depots, doing your macro cycles and what have you. So if the Zerg player is this good at forcing interactions and forcing you to watch your bio constantly or pay the price and lose your bio, then the Zerg's just like able to run away with the game. But it does require such crazy levels of intense like execution to even put the Terran in in that position where you're constantly dogging him with your mutas. The lurkers are out now, so Sharp, I mean, he just can't make any progress. If he wants to go to any of these bases, they might as well leave the muta or Marines back at home at this point because he's just not going to be able to do anything. Hero must be paying attention somewhere else because he almost lost a muta there, but now coming in, picking off some medics. God damn, this ratio is just getting worse and worse. Yeah, really, uh... Driving that ratio down into the ground here. Only three medics remain. As more hatches get added on and huge waves of drones start to pop out. Hero is going to move into this late game with confidence, man. What is Sharp going to do? He's got to get like a drop or something going. We need like a lotto. We need to roll the dice here, I think, yeah. to Sharp now. I, th I, I think. But the problem with that is this the mutas are so strong, you have to just get lucky. You know what I mean? Because the mutas can shut that down so easily. So you're then just, yeah, complete. You Not only are you gambling by going for lotto ships, but you're gambling that the lotto ships even have a chance at returning any value, let alone potentially a lot. So, and uh, I just, uh, I'm kind of blown away by how well um, Hero has been able to navigate this. Like, and cross map as well. It's not that easy to do this with muters against a Terran player cross map because it's very easy for the bio to like sneak out or like force you to like go into retreat or be unable to dog the bio constantly. And Hero's just said goodbye to all of those potentials and just completely had control over the game until just now. Finally, the Terran has some kind of map control. We are going to be seeing that heavy. Lotto drip, uh, lotto drop commitment, and four dropships will be enough to get something done. It's just going to be a matter of can he catch Hero with his pants down and not actually respond to this in time. Hero has perfect Overlord coverage around the, the map, uh, uh, around the base of Sharp. I think he might have just seen those dropships fly out um, with the Overlord that's just south of this position. I'm not sure though. Uh, one thing that we can say is Sharp forced all of the mutas into the main base. So there's no mutas down here in the bottom left to actually deal with this, but there's so many lurkers, so many uh, defilers here. It's going to be really hard to get any damage. He spreads out everything, dropping in a long, long line here, trying to deal as much damage as possible. Oh, he saves both the dropships. That's a huge save there. And he drops off a lot of these Marines in kind of precarious positions, but no medics with this at all. The, the ratio really coming back to bite him right now. Just nothing here to heal any of these Marines. I swear the mutalisks are like the are like demons and devils that are like convincing all these girls to like like leave the map and go and like start on OnlyFans. And then there's just not a lot left over for the rest of the Marines and they're just getting absolutely eviscerated. These mutas are going to come through and just clean up everything now. We do have an irradiate here to throw down, and maybe Hero's not got this on a control group anymore. He might not be controlling his mutas too much anymore. Okay, he does pay attention to them, but sometimes when you get to this point in the game, you've already like utilized that hotkey elsewhere, and then if uh, an irradiate comes down on these, you know, you could end up losing a lot of those uh, mutas all at the same time. Now, that's not going to happen here. Hero keeps those alive. And he falls back onto the high ground. So at least Sharp, if he didn't kill anything a major here, at least he forced Hero up off of that fourth base. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the main thing. Keeping the Zerg from getting that fourth gas is critical. If he can maintain this game state, it won't be super bad for him if he can also secure his own third gas. But we see a counterattack right now from Hero to stop that from happening. A play going down on two of those vessels, but might catch this SCV before that CC finishes up, which would be a little bit of a precarious situation that he now faces. That was a great uh, move there, catching the Defiler walking across the map. One Defiler walking across like that can absolutely end your game. 
um, and just shut down your base instantly. But uh, luckily for him, he did manage to catch on to that. And uh, he will be able to clear out these uh, lurkers here in a moment with just some irradiates. And, uh, that's that's very good for Sharp, although he doesn't have a CC yet. He's probably going to start a new one inside of his main and just float it down now. But he's been delayed quite heavily. Still, only on three bases here. Ultraless Cavern is done. Hero is going to go into three base ultra. It's not the strongest thing in the world. Um, but it can still be, you know, give him a fighting chance here. Oh, diving on top of these dropships. The dropships are going to start to go down. He does manage to unload and he kills almost every single Muta here. My goodness, yeah, he a lot not, of them went down. Yeah, he, he did not split out those mutas. He was like banking on killing those dropships way faster than he... He probably calculated that completely wrong and he really paid the price for that. There's a, a lot of gas gone down the drain. Like that could have been like five ultralisks and instead all those mutas are now just dead to a few radiates. And my... Oh, doesn't quite snipe this drone though. So we'll eventually maybe get this base up and running. And if he can shut down these dropships and prevent this hatch oh. from going down... Ooh. This is pretty big, but not quite killing them though. Still going to be unloading, but with the Lurkers already in position, it doesn't really matter. He's going to try and see if he can get behind the minerals maybe, but so far shutting down any attempt from Sharp at getting a, a, a critical edge in this game. And now the supply is going into Hero's favor for the first time in a significant way. And that's a really rough spot for Sharp to be in right now. His third being delayed and getting these dropships cleaned up and not being able to stop this fourth base going up. It might be too much room to weather. I'm really worried about the 1600 gas bank right now. It just dropped a little bit, but yeah. 1600 gas into Ultra is going to be insane. And I mean, he just opened up a bunch of supply. We've got, you know, 50 supply open here. He's going to pop out a huge amount of Ultralis. And even on three gas, now it's going to be four here soon, but he's been on three gas for quite some time. It's still yeah. going to be a lot of Ultras, man. It's still going to be fearsome, fearsome stuff coming out of Hero. And yeah. Sharp just hasn't had this third base online for very long. He's just started to mine it here. Um, he's kind of falling apart right now. We, we saw it as he busted into the natural. Um, while he was doing that drop down there, he kind of lost control of both of those different uh, fronts there. He wasn't able to drop properly. And he lost everything in going into the natural. He's going to go for an eraser trick here. Going to kill a lot of drones, it looks like. But yeah. the return with this Scourge. Going to be picking those off. He's going to lose three vessels here for hardly any return. Yeah, I mean, the Firebats here will actually be a little bit annoying. There is a few Lurkers shuffling out of these Nidus Canals to try and shut this down as the Ultras are starting to hatch now, but just barely not able to get on top of Hero. Like, there's a few good attempts here from Sharp. He's going to, like, come in here and snipe the gas and be a little bit annoying, but not really going to be doing the damage that he needs to actually get a win here. And uh, everything's just so well timed out for Hero. It does shut down the mining of this gas, like I said. It would have been, like, six Ultras worth of gas per minute if he didn't shut down that gas so now we've like we've managed to like you know squeeze him out so now it's like 4.5 ultras worth of gas per minute but we still have so much drone saturation that we can also churn out crazy amounts of zerglings of all these macro hatcheries so still gonna be really rough for sharp he's got to rely on fire bats a little bit yeah four hatcheries in the main base down at the bottom left just so much production here for hero and he did lose a few drones off of that eraser trick but he could easily replace those very very quickly and Ultras are now out with speed as well. We should have four armor and plus one attack. Plus two attack, in fact. So just maximizing all of his upgrades here. That's I, I don't think that's going to make much of a difference for the Ultras, but that makes a lot of difference for the Lings. They just crush through things. Everything on the ground is going to disappear. It helps. It helps two shot marines even if they're being healed by a medic. So that's mm. still a, that's, that's something to consider. It does. It's just, it does. It does help the links with their crack upgrade. More importantly, it allows that crazy DPS to kick in for those zerglings while the ultras are tanking. Beautiful plague on those bio forces, but might still catch the the uh, defiler as a bit of compensation. Oh, does save the defiler actually. Keeping that defiler alive. He also went up top and put a bunch of uh, irradiates down. Uh, I don't think that those vessels were killed either so you know getting a lot of value out of the vessels here is very very nice but it's for gas uh, hero now and the ultra number is getting higher and higher he's uh, playing keep away right now right he's just running around yeah. making sure that uh he doesn't lose too much and that his ultra list number just continues to grow his overall supply is 
just crazy right well, now. 162. Yeah, he doesn't want to make a full commitment until his... There it is. I was about to say, he doesn't want to make a full commitment until his, his fifth armor kicks in on those mm. ultras. So he makes sure that he trades at full efficiency because he does need to worry about the plus three attack of the Terran. But now that he's got the full armor upgrades, he doesn't need to worry about that anymore. We can start to chuck our army at, at him. Feeding into the Terran a little bit here. Losing some of those, but... He will continue to mass up. More bases, double expansion here from Hero. Um, Ultra's gonna hit from the top side here as the Marine Medic starts to push out. He can get a counter-attack going, maybe t force him to turn around for a moment. Um, but yeah, we're gonna see huge waves of Ultra start to come out here. Sharp is actually sending his, his army to 6 o'clock. Not sure what he's looking for there. He actually needs to shut down these, uh, these fresh bases that are coming up right now. We cannot allow a fifth gas, um, at all. That, that's just not a... That's not a possibility that we can allow here as Sharp. Yeah, if we keep the Zerg on four base and we also get a fourth gas online, it's not the end of the world. It's still not a good situation, but if we allow any more gases to come online, yeah, it's going to get real dicey real quick. Hero's still in the lead. 170 supply to 135 for Sharp. And now the upgrade advantage of Sharp, having that fast plus three weapons timing is now completely negated with the armor online. So, yeah, it's like a ticking time bomb right now for Sharp. He needs to figure out something. He needs to defuse the situation and, like, try and figure out a way of navigating his way back in this game, but allowing these six gases to come online is probably not going to be doing that job for him. I think we're going to see one final engagement here. Huge amounts of ultras. The Defiler tries to make its way down here. It's not able to come in, and you know what? That's a really good trade for Sharp. He killed a lot of Lings. He damaged a lot of these ultras, and the Defiler wasn't able to make it there in time. Um... He needs, like, a bunch more trades like that, and he needs to shut down a base, though, if he wants to have any chance in this game. Yeah, if you, please tell me you've got Burrow upgrade. Come on, Hero. It's 21 minutes in the game. You should have Burrow by now. He does not have Burrow, but he does have Scourge ready, unwilling to give their lives for the Swarm. Sends them in. <laughs> finishes off those two uh, Eraser vessels, and he will be able... To push that away to continue to drone up here and look at the 190 spell he's about to max out shun yeah. when are we gonna have this, this big crazy. engagement here okay finally some ultras making oh. their way down to six he's playing it like pvt where he's just like you know like just keeping away from a main engagement for as long as possible like it seems like he's just trying to guarantee a win as much as he can and it might work out well for him like he's not really like tried to do a big frontal engagement forever like he's just throwing a few handfuls of units here and there he's slowly like like avoiding any like major engagements while also still churning out a crazy production so and he's keeping the, the the army count of sharp low even with those small pockets of units which is critical here it's just funny to me to see like a maxed out zerg and we're, we're watching like two to three ultralists fight in each engagement but yeah we should be able to put together like 12 to 20 ultras here eventually oh my god every Whoa. single vessel goes down what a wave wow. of scourge there from hero perfectly controlled every single vessel is now gone so really the hope of sharp here being dashed by those uh kamikaze units just taking everything out um flank here coming forward as well and Again, just like four or five ultras, all that's necessary to deal with this push. But uh, Sharp trying to retake six o'clock. I think this is going to be the final battle. He's just going to bring everything together yeah. here and shut down that six o'clock. And that should be lights out for Sharp. I mean, even with like half of his army, he could probably kill Sharp. So yeah, this is going to be really rough really soon. I mean, there's, there's a handful of vessels and there's a, there's a strong enough bioforce that he won't just die to like a pocket of units. But it doesn't matter. Like he's going to start getting counterattacked here on the right hand side. Force the army to turn around to deal with this or go for a counterattack. The counterattack wouldn't work because there's already a mass amount of units at that rally point. And even if he does turn around to clean up, he's going to lose the economic curve of the game very soon. So yeah. Everything is just geared up for Hero securing this win here. And he's doing it very tactfully. He's very, very composed. There's there's no, like, rushing to get things done here. This is very methodical and, like, a slow burner of a game in how he's winning. But it's really well thought out and executed.
I totally agree. Look at this. He even runs the ultras out of here when he sees the marines return. So he gets maximum damage out of those units, and then he continues to build up that ultralist count and not allow these to fall. He comes in as soon as the marines and medics are out of position, shuts down this space at 6 o'clock again. This is one of the most methodical takedowns I've seen. Uh, from yeah. a Zerg player. He's really just pulling him apart piece by piece. Uh, whereas uh, I think a lot of Zerg players would just want to ball up their army into a huge mass and with 90 supply advantage just, just run over the Terran player, whether that be in the natural or just smash through the army. Yeah, the instinct is to be like Mike Tyson and like really just like hammer your advantage, but he's being more like Floyd Mayweather and just like completely we wearing him down with defensive tactical for outplay. And it, he is going to be able to shut down some of these bases, but it's too little too late. Like he's he's mining at all these other bases already and he shut down this fourth base from coming online. Just one base of economy here for Sharp to like for four of um of heroes here so yeah this is not gonna go heroes way uh, not gonna go sharps way like anytime soon that was a great final attack here a great final attempt from sharp all the remainder of the units will be cleaned up though and he does not have that extra base online he's still kind of hanging in there a little bit but hero ugh, just such a massive advantage you know double the supply here 144 to just 72 the Ling number is getting insane. The Ultras are uh, spawning out once again. He does retake that base over in the top left. 26 minutes, so he's uh, out of gas in the main and natural and potentially down in the third base as well here soon. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's just not enough. GG is called. Sharp taps out. And Terran going to be forced to use their first revive here. Who are they going to bring back? I'm thinking it's Royal. What do you think, Shun? I mean, I'm, th I'm thinking Royal as well. Yeah, Royal looking really, really good in his uh, previous games, but we're about to find out. Let's jump into that next one. Wow, bringing back Light here. I'm a little bit surprised we didn't see Royal revived, but there you have it. Ro uh, Light going to be hit with that revive. Last chance here for Terran. Would be a shame to see Terran go down. And Zerg go into the finals with the performance recently uh, out of these two squads. Well, what I'd love to happen now is a really good game that Light wins. And it's such a good game that they revive Hero and we have a rematch. That'd be like ideal scenario for me watching. But uh, we'll have to see what transpires. Very early SEV coming out though for uh, 8 ranks. Yeah, going to put on the pressure here. And I definitely understand the thinking. Um, Zerg players today have been going for altogether too many 12 hatches, don't you think, Shun? Yeah, no, I, I, I do agree with that. But this might be the game that Hero throws out a 9 pool or 11, 11 pool. We never know. We'll have to see. No 9 pool just yet. Uh, but we'll, uh, also, I would like to point out, like, I, I kind of agree with the light choice. Even though Royal's been performing really well, light has an aura about him that these players can't seem to ignore like there's that kind of like we were just saying off air like that sort of flash like um aura uh, and like they, they just seem to respect him so much and like back in the day he was one of the players that was getting all kills left right and center in pro league days so not really not really like you know hard to wrap your head around why they think that but they seem to really double down on how much respect they give to light and he is one of the most experienced players out there and uh especially on a live stage so the fact that this isn't a live stage kind of negates a little bit of his experience but uh i can see why they would want to revive such a tvz specialist and someone with such experience going for experience here over recent performance uh, yeah. understandable decision light uh, gonna be putting this pressure on with the eight racks and spotted immediately two shots come out from that drone so getting that little bit of extra damage might become a factor here just send that drone all the way back and pull uh, looks like eight drones here to the front this is a great response from hero can he get past the bunker can he stop the bunker here this is this is excellent timing. This is much better than what we saw out of action. And action was able to hold. So hopefully Hero can hold this as well. Looks like he's just gonna gun down that bunker. Instantly goes down and now gonna dive here on top of the Marines. One 
drone will be targeted. Will he pull back the second drone that gets targeted? No. Second drone goes down. Third drone falls as well. Now things are starting to get out of control. Fourth drone. This is looking really bad now for Hero. Four drones, pretty darn rough. He's trying to dive on top. And fifth drone? Okay, things are just completely out of control now. I mean, you almost have to go July Zerg here and, like, send the drones to attack and make lings, but because he didn't make any lings behind this, that's not even an option. I mean, that's just devastating damage to Hero early game. I mean, yeah, guys, we might see a real back-and-forth semi-finals here. This is crazy. The games have literally just gone, like, tit for tat, and this might not be any different. You can just see how 8 Rex became such a popular build. It punishes so well it's so hard to control drones early game uh, get them to actually dive on top of the marines properly and deal that damage and pull back the injured drones just such a refined skill that players are still trying to work out the the optimal solution to and hero just not able to 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 deal with that properly i mean he killed the bunker wouldn't it be, have been prudent to maybe pull back after Finishing that off, stopping right. that, start a sunken colony or something. I mean, yeah, but there is a little. It, the hero wanted to do the lingless option. So, mm. like, as far as he's concerned, I want to get on top of your marines and right. kill some marines and get, and get compensation for losing all this mining time yeah. because I didn't have to make lings. So right. that's the problem because we didn't because we didn't make those early lings and then yeah we paid the price because we lost just too many drones. So it's, it's unfortunate that that could have gone really hero's way. Still, it's not like that was a bad choice per se. It's just that he tried to to get away with a little bit of a greedy option and just it, it fell flat on, it, flat on its face well he's trying to get away with some more greed here and i think light gonna be able to come in and punish um he's only built four lings and there's six marines no five marines coming into the natural this yeah. presents a real threat to hero and we're gonna be able to go behind the mineral patches potentially um gunning down drones right now is just so painful he was trying to cut corners here oh this is a great spot though for hero look at this Clearing this up oh. insanely well. He doesn't even lose a single drone. Uh, uh, that's probably about as good as that could have gone for Hero. Yeah, like, uh, that's a little bit of a uh, evening of the, the scales. Just slightly. Like, still, this is not good for Hero by any stretch of the word. But that actually changes things a lot. Yeah, like, this is no longer, like, Light can just dominate Hero and make Hero look silly. This is now, like, a, oh, actually, Hero has a chance at, like, turning this into his game. That's what we like to see. We've got a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. He's going to dive here in the front. We saw that play against Barracks. It worked out much better right before the Medic pops out. It's a good time to try and jump in and kill a couple of Marines, but doesn't work out as well here against Light. And, uh, oh, wow. wow. Five racks. Dude, we never see yeah. this play anymore. This is so rare to get five racks. Um, we usually can't. You, you you have to cut marines to usually go for this, but because mm. he did so much damage to hero, the relative timings of the game have been shifted enough to allow for this to be an option. It used to be so standard, the five racks play. Against, yeah, against three hatch especially. Yeah, it was like a very standard way of playing. Against two point five hatch is not quite as good. But uh, if you can cut marines, you can still do it. It's just not super optimal. It does really slow down your tech. It's a very like mm -hmm. all-in way of playing Terran in this matchup. But uh, with the with the with certain game states, it's more semi-all-in because you don't actually have to kill the Zerg. You just have to trade well, do damage, deny the third, and put a lot of pressure. And he's already done a lot of damage to the economy of here early on, so he's already kind of geared up to go for this anyway. So he won't really be punished as long as he doesn't trade badly. Yeah, he's going to have so much Medic Marine on the field. It's going to be wild. Um, yeah. We just haven't seen this type of play for so long. We're not going to be kind of used to it here, but uh, maybe the same thing can be said about Hero, right? Maybe he'll expect, you know, three, four racks or something like that in a faster uh, factory. He just won't be ready for, you know, a, a lot of mm. Zerg players are going for like just five six mutas and then building up a bunch of drones and getting their extra base and uh, if you end up doing that here against light he's gonna have so many marines and medics he's just gonna punch right through there's no way that you can dive on top of his marine and medic with uh ling muta in that case 
Yeah, and because of how like weak the initial muta force has been, they've the marines are also forcing a lot of sunken. So, he uh, hero to his credit identifies the threat. He understands that this is what's happening. That's why we see such a huge commitment into sunken. It's maybe a little bit of a over commitment, you could argue. Like maybe four would be okay here, but hero is also identifies the, the how serious the situation is. He's going to build a shit ton of sunkens and then try and get counter damage with the muta to try and like thread the needle of this economic curve of the game to both deny any counter-attack potential and keep uh, Light being the defender here and try and get some life back in this game. And so far it's going okay for him, but honestly he's not out of the woods yet. Killing Marines here though is just a drop in the bucket, right? Every time you see him trade uh, health on the meters and kills on the meters for, um, you know, a few Marines here and there, it's just, it's... It's exactly what Light wants, right? He's just going to be pumping out so yeah. many Marines that uh, every single time a trade happens, it's going to be kind of in his favor. Um, right. What I think he wanted to do was build all of these Sunkins and then go across the map with a huge clutch of uh, Mutas and just start picking off SCVs and slowing down Light. But he wasn't able to get in there. Um, no. He's just sitting here way back. And I mean, this looks like a lot of Sunkins, but with the plus one and this many Marines, you might actually be able to break through. Uh, yeah, it's actually possible he can actually break it. Like, it, I know it sounds crazy, but there's enough medics, there's enough marines that he can actually smash this. And especially if the muters aren't around to come in right away and help. They are actually right nearby though, so he's not going to pull the trigger on that. He's just going to kill the overlord. But uh, he is forcing more sunkens. And uh has to be said though, he only recently started this factory. The factory's only just now finishing up, so he's only just now able to either do a tank push since there's the queen's nest, or he can go straight into vessels. And he's probably going to go straight into vessels yeah might as well go for the vessel play it's uh, much more like oh my god he's getting caught here in the back oh no so many mutas gonna go down here quite a lot of marines actually falling as well taking a pretty decent trade but eventually this trade is gonna go sour as the mutas uh, get lower and lower on that hp coming back in again which is six marines this time or six mutas this time Oh, another big flood of mutas coming in. Maybe he can start he to break to the main. Yeah, no, he wants to commit to the main while using... This is so... This is exactly what I thought Hero was going for. This big sunken wall while doing a lot of muta pressure. And this is one of the ways he can come back into this game a little bit purely based on how late the tech is of this the starport. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a little bit of time before those irradiates become relevant. Usually it's about 11 minutes, and now it's going to be like pushed all the way back to like closer to 12 minutes. So there's a big window here for Hero to abuse this situation. But he's like I said, he's not out of the woods yet. He's, he's making good moves, but... But he's certainly still got a hill to climb. Yeah, he's getting caught in between the two groups of Marines, but he identifies one group of Marines is a lot lower in number. The one on the right-hand side had hardly any Marines, no medics with that either. So he ends up clearing out a few more Marines and killing off a few more SCVs as well. But transition is starting here for Hero. This base down in the bottom right, I mean, how did this not get scouted? Light has such a big force on the map, and he's just sitting out in front of the natural, letting this base go up. That could actually bring Hero back in the game, just the fact that Light doesn't know about this. But it's because of how heavy the interactions were in the main base. Like, like he, he, that's one of the things that Hero is so good at doing. Like, even when he's in a... Think of how bad of a situation Hero was in the early game. He had, like, nothing. And he's turned it into this. Like, this guy is, like, genius levels of Zerg. He's gonna come forth a lot of links now. Taking this engagement. Is the Marine count low enough? He's targeting down as many mutas as he can. He's gonna kill, like, every muta here. Light taking a great trade. Wow. And GG is called, wow. Hero gambling at all that he could kill that. And it just wasn't yeah. enough. He's just gonna tap yeah. out. That's uh, it's, actually a, it's actually a misplay from Hero because, like, the link streaming in, if he had like synchronized that attack just a little bit more cautiously and allowed those like link streaming in to be a little bit more synchronized with the initial mute of force, like, that actually could have gone on Hero's way very quickly. Very tough situation there, th there though. No matter which way you split it, Light was in a great right. spot. Hero. Tries his best to bring it back. He puts on a good show. Will he be the one revived here? I'd love to see another rematch between him and Light. I'd also love to see Solki 
versus light here. That would be a lot of fun to watch again. Um, let's see who they decide to bring out. Our final game is coming right up. Soul Key going to be the revive here. Can't say I'm unhappy about it, but Troy is our last map shown. Yeah, I mean, it could, this could get wild. I mean, who knows what's going to have sparks could fly, so to speak. I imagine so, but I'm just really shocked to see this be the decider whether Zerg or Terran goes to the final match. Troy here, Light versus Soliki. I mean, the matchup is great, but the map, I, I just... I, I would have loved to see like Citadel or something played out here between these two. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. But Troy can make for some very interesting game states. So I'm hoping we'll at very least have a very interesting game to, to cast and watch here. Eight racks once again from Light. So he's going to put on that early pressure. Seems standard on this map specifically to go for that eight racks. Yeah. Like, you got to put on that early yeah. pressure. You got to have that. You have that opportunity to potentially, you know, take over the natural and kill the assimilators. You got to go for it. I think you do. And I also think you have to keep Zergs from, like, being so confident with the 2.5 or 12 hatch openings. So, but it looks like Soul Key still not going to care. Just going to throw down that 12 hatch. Let's see if he goes to the 2.5, because if he doesn't make a pull on the 11, then, yeah, could take a lot of damage here. But he will be getting the first scout with the Overlord, which is actually pretty critical. He sees the SCVs. He knows. He must know, right? Let's see if he builds a, a gas here. If he doesn't build the gas, then he knows. Well, he knows the timing of the SCVs relative to when they, the rack... Sh like, usually you send the, the rack scouting SCV, but because the racks right. finished earlier, he knows relative to the racks... Like, that was an earlier scout timing. So, yeah, he should be able to identify that, that was eight racks immediately. He starts the gas. Cancels. Okay, I think yeah, he, he knows now. Confirm. Yeah, he wanted to confirm. I guess, I guess he wasn't 100% sure and wanted to confirm with the drone scout. Well, he's going to pull the drones now. Let's see what he can do against these Marines. Let's see what the control looks like. Is it going to be better than what we saw at a hero? Surrounding the bunker here. He can get the kill, looks like. Does get the cancel, actually. Like going to be backing off. The move commands here. Not the greatest for uh, Solki. Actually gets the drones kind of dancing on each other. Now going to come forward. One drone has died. Second drone going to go down here. Third drone going to be targeted. Fourth drone going to be targeted as well. Doesn't go down. There it is. He gets the fourth drone. And this is already a success here for Light. Not as much of a success yeah. as against uh, Hero there. But still a full-on success here for Light. Yeah, you need two drone kills to be even. Three isn't a, a pretty big advantage, and four is just like, yeah, you're, you're pretty wildly far ahead. He did get um, all the marine kills and one SCV as compensation, so it's not like end of the world. If these six slings put on pressure, maybe you could argue that the scales aren't too light favored, but unless light, light should be able to actually hold this. Is he, if he starts the. Please tell me you're not just going to start the CC. Block the gap! Ooh, okay, for a second okay. there, I thought he was going to start with DC without even blocking the gap, and I was worried for him. Yeah, that looks scary for a second. But he does get in, into place in time. And I'm just, I, I'm a little bit shocked that we didn't see uh, drones being produced. Like, when I saw those lings, my heart kind of fell for Solki here. Because uh, if you're going to yeah. do, like, a drone defense like that... Um, and you're just not going to build lings. They just just don't build lings and and just go for you know mass drone behind it. It gets you in such a better position. Um, but these six lings popping out minus three drones. Uh, I just don't. I don't know if he can bring it back from here. No, it's it's tough to to bring it back from here. But what what the reason why he lost that engagement was because he tried to mineral walk to the gas which his overlord had vision on in the Terran's natural. But because he did that, the drones slid on top of each other too much that when he did a move command, like three or four of them all bugged out. And he he shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have like tried to drill to the gas in the Terran's natural. Like that was the mistake. Like he tried to do a drill command, which really messed up the AI of the drones. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of lanes. Wow, the Marine's actually coming out here being... Uh, oh, he's going to get around it. Oh, he targets the... He targets the... He targets the... the no what? way. What oh, my God. Flying, sweet Mary Jane, did we just watch? I can't believe he made that mistake what? there. 
That is crazy. Nah, nah. he attack moved the ground next to the depot to kill the Marines. Yeah. And, and he clicked on the depot. Like, that's yeah. nut. What are we doing? Oh my days. That was his. That was his opportunity right there. That was. That was yeah. everything. That was, that was the game. That was the game. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't gonna be a, like him winning there, the game right off of that, but like he, he would have killed a bunch of Marines. Yeah. He would have brought a lot of the pressure off of himself. The timing attack would have been much worse. But here, the I mean, yeah. <sighs> I'm so speechless about that. That's gnarly to me. Like, I can't even begin to explain. Like, if he killed that bio ball, like, not only has he, like, completely reset the relative, like, power of and win percent of, of both sides, but he might even be slightly favored after that. Hmm. Well, he's going to kill the assimilators in the bottom right a lot sooner than did action. So, oh wait, the SCV is going to slip by. Look at the SCV goes down into the bottom right hand corner. Maybe he can build a racks down there or something and kill that base. That would be hilarious. Um, that would be funny, yeah. The, the lings are on the outside, so they can't do anything about it. Is he going to build something down there? Maybe a, maybe a, a, a factory? Just start making... Well, that'd, be fun. Some... that'd be fun. Yeah. The hilarious play would be making his tech. Yeah, rather than making that factory there, like making it in the bottom right, it would have been really funny and cute. But there's also a chance of that going horribly wrong and right. completely screwing him up if it gets caught before it finishes. So yeah, it's probably if he does do something like that, it'll be a Rex. Yeah. Well, we will have Mutas out here shortly. Solki. Has only one location he needs to block. We don't have an evolution chamber yet, so we don't have the confirmation of Crazy Zerg, but that's definitely on the table here. Um, let's see what he decides to go for. Light just getting four racks up. Everything's standard here. He doesn't need to do anything fancy. He's just got to play his standard, standard game and deal with whatever Solki tries to pull out. And he should be in a good spot. Armory on the way. Okay, we are going to see some Valkyries pop out here. Yeah. And after a full Rex commitment, this is going to be an interesting situation. I mean, I still can't believe that Solki did that. If I was in the Zerg dugout right now, I'd be preparing the speech that I was going to give Solki after the game, regardless of whether or not he won or lost. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, that hurts. That definitely hurts. That's uh, gonna you know cause him some some nightmares here. He's gonna wake up screaming yeah. in the middle of the night. He missed that. <laughs> That's how much of an aura light has. He makes you make mistakes like that. That's how much of a presence this guy has, which is wild to think about. Like, when else does Sulky make a mistake like that? Going to be coming into the natural, killing off one of these turrets, opens up a pocket to exploit. This depot that creates a wall in from earlier does make it a lot harder to cycle units down here to defend. So he's going to try and get his Marines shoved up against this depot. But you actually can't save that depot. He can kill that eventually. Yeah, that, uh, that depot's in a precarious position here. Was very helpful against Lings earlier, but... Should be able to get that. Keep bouncing the glaives here. Kill off some uh, SCVs too. He gets an SCV for free. It's very nice. Uh, and I mean, Sulky's not out of this. He's got some play here left. For sure. Uh, what is his plan though? I'm really curious to see what his actual follow-up is going to be. Yeah, I mean, he might just play relatively standard but we see tanks and valkyries coming out Ooh. Okay, okay 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 making the spire great again here let's see if he can get yeah. some uh some good position on these uh, guardians i mean we do have already valkyries out right so just putting them over the natural or something is probably not going to be cost efficient but you could but you could use them defensively to help deal with the tank push, for example. Like, mm. there is other avenues of utilizing Guardians here. Yeah, absolutely. Very strong against the, the, the tank push. Um, let's see how many he makes. If he's going to make, like, a full, you know, six or eight or something. It does slow down a lot of your other tech if you do, like, a big commitment to Guardians right now. 
Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, they are very guest heavy, and he's going to be also committing to a lot of uh, sunken colonies. This base in the bottom right needs to be dropped, but this natural expansion is still fully exposed. And with the high ground, as long as you got plenty of sunken, that's not going to be bustable. But still needs to be careful about the Valkyries. This could, the game could run amok if he makes a lot of Valkyries, like we saw um, we'll do earlier. The, 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 the similar situation could transpire. But instead, Light is not going to be committing heavily into Valkyries. He's just going to be using them as point defense to get this tank push underway and the response from Sulky is going to be these guardians to sort of counter siege against that so he's built a lot of sunkens to buy the time that he needs for those viewers to morph into those guardians and while using these uh, pockets of scourge to zone out those uh, Valkyries from being too relevant here. He's going to have a big moment here when the guardians come forward where he has to dive on top of the Valkyries. Here comes that push. The push from Light but he goes for the oh, no. oh he goes for the shot on the Valkyries and all the Valkyries go down at the same time. This is a great defense from Soul Key. Light cannot push this. Wow. He's going to lose a bunch of these Marines on the uh, the exit here. Great, great defense overall from Soul Key. The Scourge were oh so my. clutch. We have a dropship that's going to be the gambit here from Light while throwing down a lot of uh, starports here. Going to be going all the way up to three here to try and catch up in the anti-air and support production that, that he will need to deal with this. He might even just go into like mass cloaked wraiths or something. I don't know. He might just also just pump Valkyries or go straight into vessels. But yeah, now Sulky kind of flipping the script a little bit oh. here and putting on pressure. Catches the dropship oh. in the bottom right. Are you kidding me? Sulky. Are you kidding me? Sulky's got a few guardians left he's got a few guardians left he's left the, the front a little bit open here though diving on top of the lurkers they're not going down the lurkers are still alive and the guardians are pushing forward he's gonna be able to hold this i think yeah not enough marines here to fight the guardians all the tanks gonna go down and he's denying the mining in the natural sulky making it work right now this is so Sulky impressive. That's a great again, like you said. And Sulky for president. I mean, it is the election, I think, right? So, I mean, be better than making your votes in for Sulky, guys. I mean, even when he's like making really crazy bad mistakes, he's still somehow turning a bad situation into a very, very playable game. And even looking very strong for him right now 69 to fly to 61. Got plenty of value out of those Guardians, which isn't always the case. Can be very difficult units to squeeze value out of. And here comes the Wraith response, like I thought. Yeah, Cloak Wraith response I thought might be a possibility here, and we are going to be seeing that. Uh, he needs to be really careful not to um, like lose too many of these Scourge for free to trading to Light's very strong Wraith Micro. Light is the one of the, he used to be the best in the business at Wraith Micro. That might still be the case. I'm not 100% sold on that, but he is basically the, the original gangster on Wraith Micro. Ooh, we got the Devourer out here. Single Devourer does help out a lot in terms of revealing these high, uh, these wraiths at least, right? You're going to be able to see them once the acid spores are spread. Um, but there are so many wraiths coming out here. Triple. Uh, oh my god, so close. Tri triple star port production means he's going to have so many wraiths. He also added on three uh, control towers, though. Did you see that? Yeah. What, what's he gonna yeah. do with three control towers here? Just pure like dropship wraith, or what are we doing? Uh, Valkyries, I imagine. It could be Valkyries. Like, I uh, imagine he's gonna pepper in some Valkyries. It might still be dropships as well. It won't be vessels, I don't think, because he can't afford to make that many vessels right now. I love the the spore colony ad right here. Um, we actually yeah, need you another one. Down this. Yeah, yeah that you get the here. Oh, Hydra's pop out, though. Ooh, Hydra's <gasps> gonna kill a bunch of these. <gasps> That's actually huge. There's so much gas disappeared. We have got the, the Lotto dropships coming in, but, I mean, he lost a lot of race there. He need... <gasps> uh, if he was paying attention, I don't I don't think he was paying attention, though. I don't think he actually saw those dropships. Well, he had the opportunity to see them. That's what matters. Having the lings just spread out <laughs> everywhere. This man is just crazy. Sulky, is he going to be able to win this? It's all going to come down to this next drop. Going to come in with the wraiths. Just one, two wraiths left. The big drop here. Guardian's very good against dropships. Not a lot of units popping out here very slowly. Uh, you know, slowly popping out. Trying to fight against these guardians, it's not gonna work. Guardians just hell holding on ev to everything. Guardians making 
Uh, you know, their namesake here. Whoa, 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 the fire bats. Oh, dude, sending back those drones just a little bit too early. He gets a lot of kills. Is it going to be enough, though? Yeah. I don't know. This game might be a real tough nut for, like, to swallow here, saying, like, it's crazy that, like, Sulky's just, like, batting him away like this. Uh, I, I thought for a second that Light would really dominate Sulky here, but he still can. It's just not like the game's over or anything, but, I mean, look at this stellar play from Sulky. just, like, throws down a Dark Swarm here. He's also got a Defiler over here in the main base with some Hydras. He can throw down a Plague and then pick those off. Like, really stellar stuff. I'm so impressed. Like, I can't believe that he made such a critical mistake, and now he's playing like this afterwards. Yeah, not holding the eight racks very well, but... Everything else, every other move has been just fantastic. It's not like Light's playing a bad game either, guys. He's really pulling out some great stuff. The tank push was really well-timed, uh, well-executed, but the Guardian defense was fantastic. The dropship defense as well, just super on yeah. point. That first dropship that came out, I think that one was the most critical stop, right? He hit that with... A pair of Scourge, just as all the other chaos was going on in the map, and shuts down Light, and GG is wow. called. Light taps out. Soul Key Crazy. takes it home for the Zerg. That's just wild to me. Like, what? is going on like this how can sulky make such a blunder which still keeps him really heavily behind in the game and he's against a player of light's caliber and still makes it look like that this is this guy is insane saying not just one blunder but two right he lost so many drones yeah. to the early eight racks and then he messed up with his lings as well yeah and he attacked the depot it, i can't believe he messed up that much early on and still made it look relatively easy against someone of light's caliber and like we say light wasn't playing bad guys like light was playing some stellar starcraft as well this is wild absolute godlike performance out of zerg today especially sold key with that final game dude the guardian transition was fantastic the, just the presence of mind from Soul Key throughout this series was amazing to watch. Um, but yeah, he, still, a great back and forth between these two. Yeah, I mean, all, all night long, we just had a great back and forth series. And then, like you said, in the final game, I was so impressed by just how well mapped everything was for Soul Key. Like, it, it, trying to pioneer himself as you know, the, the, the Flash of Zerg, but not quite, not quite making it. I mean... The, the the depot mistake of like a clicking the ground slightly to the right of the depot and then like blundering that entire opportunity to comp just gobble up all those marines obviously that's a huge blunder but the fact that he came back after losing those drones and that opportunity is kind of nutty to think about and how well calculated the guardian transition was like the tank push hit right as the guardians were just starting to morph and he he overmade sunkens by about 50 percent which is just barely enough to weather the storm of like two three tanks shelling you and he had enough flock of scourge to zone out the the the, the valkyries and when the guardians did hatch he pounced on the valkyries and sniped all three of them with the split scourge which is that in and of itself is hard to execute much less get all those other timings down crisp yeah, that game is going in the the file folder for like best of 2024, guys. That was that was an insanely good game from Soul Key and Light absolutely no slouch. He had a great opener with the eight racks. Uh he had an excellently timed uh tank push. It's just just awesome, awesome play out of Soul Key and a small blunder with the Valkyries. Small blunder with the drop as well, not dropping directly under the Guardians just kind of spreading them out, getting cleaned up there in the main base. I mean, you never see Guardians actually guarding things, but here they are, <laughs> finally in 2024, being used yeah. properly, it seems. Uh, I mean, yeah, honestly, like, with the earlier games of, like, playing Jack in the Box with the Nidus Canals, it makes you wonder if, like, that was kind of somewhat of the original image they had for the game to be played like that, you know what I mean? Like, that was closer to how the devs intended for the game to be played than we've ever seen in the modern era, maybe. <laughs> maybe so. Um, well, Protoss versus Zerg Finals. Not what we expected. I really thought that Terran was going to be able to take this one. 
but I am not at all unhappy with the result. I think that Zurich played a great series here. Again, so much back and forth. Really, really close series. And uh, with Zurich going up against Protoss, I'm expecting to see another nice close series. I mean, you can you know flop all season long, but if you pull it out in the semifinals and the finals, right. then you know we might see some great that's games. When it that's when it counts. That's when... Uh, that's when the money's on the table, and, and Zerg is maybe going to walk away with it all. We'll see. Protoss here. Um, I mean, they're going to bring I'm together just, just an insane squad, I'm sure. Yeah, and I'm super excited for it. Tonight has gone the best possible way, like like completely back and forth. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to win. And then you get the PVZ finals anyway. Like As far as you and me are concerned, I'm sure this is like, you know, Christmas come late. Absolutely. Um, n no hate to the TVP. I mean, it's a great fun matchup, but this is the one that we know a lot better. So it's going to be a great cast, mm -hmm. guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us here. And if you're still watching right now, please do me a favor. Hit the first link in the description. It'll take you over to KCM's channel. Give them our thanks. You know, leave a comment, leave a like on the video. Uh, let them know that you appreciate the English cast. And that's it, guys. So uh, we'll be taking off here. Shouldn't you'll be back next week for sure? Absolutely. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.